Hey, how you guys doing? I hope everybody is doing great on the Father's Day weekend. Um, I am uh, waiting for Artie Bear. I have not seen him yet. Art is super reliable, so I am sure we're going to get some Artie Bear any second right now. But um, I did give him a call, and uh, I didn't hear him. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I hope everybody's doing good. You know, the first thing we're going to do is uh, just say hi to everybody, and then we're going to go ahead and um, make sure that we uh, go over this project. Although, you know, Art could show up any second, any second. And he's, he's definitely uh, desired to be here. But yes, usually Art is um, easy to count on and always there. But anyways, uh, Pastor Dan, uh, happy past Master Dan, the master of the past. Great to see you. Happy Father's Day back to you. Thanks for remembering. Yes, I am known as numbers around the Comics Gate streets uh, because I do add up the numbers. I do check them twice. Just a kid from Brooklyn. Great to see you. Yeah. Front row seats for you. Artie Bear is supposed to be here, and he will be there, I am sure. We um, Any minute now. We did change the time a couple times, so I might have thrown him off a little too much uh, on a Father's Day weekend. And if I did, that's my fault. I will take responsibility. But I will also, I will blame uh, the aunties, as always. We can always blame the aunties. Hashtag blame aunties. Rancid Potato, great to see you. Um that's, that's not a great name for a potato, but I'm sure it's definitely working for you. Hex Harper, great to see you. Your books are on the way. I know that name, Hex Harper. Um, everybody's books are on the way. Chimera. God, whoever thought I'd look forward to seeing Chimera, but it, at this moment, it's great to see you. Hello, Chimera. Rocket Simp, no. No. I see from the email I got that books are shipped. Yes. Rocket Simp, all books are shipped. Domestic an international there are three more internationals i have to ship um i have to pack them up like there's a lot of books in there so there none of, it doesn't fit into the traditional uh packaging so i'm being really careful with those and i'll have them at the post office uh late this afternoon gaming or what great to see you great to see you um uh, hello there Vera to Eric Brand with the ten dollars postmaster. What's up? Yo, yo, yo. A lot is up, a lot is going on. I am shipping like a madman. I'm shipping books all over the place. Um, it's incredible. It's incredible. Great to see you, Eric Brand. Um, he probably forgot. Uh, hey Ted. Uh Vera Day says hello, Adam. Ted Lehman says, Great to see you. Ted's great to see you too. Your book I know is shipped. Everybody's books are shipped. I just went down the whole list. It took forever, but it was so worth it. It was actually getting to be a lot of fun after a while. Um, Shadowhawk, I did see your email and I did reply. You had a change of address. Yes, I got it in time, but the problem is it was after I already shipped the books. It's always on time. So I will make sure you get the books no matter what. Just respond to me by email. We have to send a second set. Man, that's what we're going to do. you got to get your books. Chimera, it's great to see you too. Jjax, good to see you. Hope everything's going good. Hail to you too as well. Yeah, guys, if you have any address issues or anything with the books, definitely let me know. Hex, Harper, that magnificent hair, Fabio. Oh, no, it's Adam Post even better. Exactly. Yeah, just so you guys get to see what it all really looks like. Um, whoop, no, that's the full screen. We're going to remove. All right, I'm boomerang this thing at the moment. Here, Whoa, there is the haircut. That's what it looks like. Um, I can't completely see it myself because it's giving me a report on the screen. There it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I don't like getting haircuts, but it's fun to get haircuts. But then it's fun to have really long hair. Hey, Smirking Phoenix, good to see you. Um, did I read the super chat? I think I did. Yes, I did. It's, it's about the Fabio thing. It's very funny. Uh, hail the mother effing chat, Johnny Rando says. Hail to Johnny Rando. Great to see you guys. Look, guys, um, look, art. And I changed the time a couple times. It's going to be my fault that Art's not here. But we're going to deal with it. We're going to make lemonade out of lemons. And I don't think it's even that lemony. I think it's kind of awesome. So I want to talk about Art's project because, well, that was my plan. I love to keep to a plan. I love it when a plan comes together. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have heard about this or not. This is kind of like Art's killer title, black and white. Like, everybody likes this title. Why? The girl's really hot, okay? And it's probably really well written. But I mean, look, she's really hot. She's she's 
really hot. She's got that like double lightsaber thing going on. Who would not want this book? So second chance, what does that mean? Well, I like that's going around in Comicsgate. Have you guys heard of second chance stuff? Let me know if you have. Let me know if you have not. The postman does deliver. Potatoes, whether you're rancid, whether you're fresh, whether you're delicious, uh, I will always deliver. Vilened. I see Vilened and I think, thanks, Vilened. Because Vilened is always sharing. Vilened is always helping me directly and Comiskate in general. Much appreciated. Actually, it really does help. We all kind of pull together in Comiskate and get things done. You have coincidentally enough. See? See? Told you. Told you. All right. Um, black and white. Look, this is cool. I, I like hot girls. Uh, I like RT Bear. Um, I like concepts that are relatively easy to understand uh, because it, it resonates with me. It resonates with um, people who are comic fans. They kind of like get it. Iron Man. Guess what he is? He's a, he's a guy in an iron suit. Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Black and white. Well, one of them wears a black suit. The other one a white suit. And um, they're spies and stuff. We've talked about this, me and Art, before. I don't know the concept really, really well, but I know it's definitely worth checking out. So it's on Indiegogo right now, Black and White Volume 1, Second Chance. And Art says here, missed getting your copy the first time around? No worries. We got your back. Did you guys know Art was gangster? Oh, hey, compliments are free. If you have anything else to say, make it a super chat. Only kidding. Uh, all of your comments are appreciated, especially the ones that are um, about my hair uh, looking great. Yeah, I do like how it looks uh, short. It does make me look younger because I don't have like this massive gray hair. And why do I care about looking younger? I kind of don't, but I don't know. I look good. Just, just good, right? Good. Good is good. Back to black and white. So Art overprinted these, I believe. Now, he's already got 200 backers, and he's at $14,204. That's excellent for this campaign. That means, you know, he's trending to be at, you know, 40, 50,000 on this campaign. Who knows? Maybe he had six figures, but he's doing really well. Um, you know, as Art explains, uh, he's welcoming people back to the second chance campaign. I like the second chance campaign concept. In fact, with College of the Dead, um, I had a fifth cover that I really wanted to do. This is not the fifth cover, uh, but it's really, really cool. There is a sneak preview of it in uh, the College of the Dead book, if you've gotten your books yet. It's a girl who's on a cell phone um, and uh, she's taking a, we call it the selfie cover. And she's got zombies behind her. She's kind of oblivious, like she's a zombie and there's zombies there. It's a really hot uh, cover by Javier Aranda, uh, the regular uh, College of the Dead artist. And um, I pre-printed uh, copies of those to offer in my own second chance campaign. But I, I like the second chance campaign idea because it gives people, you know, campaign goes on for a month, two months, maybe three in demand a little bit, but it's very easy for people to miss it, you know, from timing. So it's great to have like one, you know, additional version you can do. So as Art says, because many of you missed the original uh, campaign, I wanted to make sure you had a chance at grabbing a copy of this exciting graphic novel for your own. Um, so Art penciled and ink. Uh, a new piece of artwork for black and white and uh, the post. Okay. He's got a, a oversized poster and the poster has uh, art, a color by Kyle Ritter, which is freaking amazing. Who doesn't love Kyle Ritter's art? We freaking all love Kyle Ritter's art as well. We should. Kyle is a super freaking talent. Okay. So he has the original cover, the limited Greg Capullo variant cover and or the Vampirella, Vampirella graphic novel cover. Wow, art. It's pretty impressive. I hadn't read this before. I wanted to kind of discover it for the first time discussing with R.T. Bear, as I planned to do. But hey, you got no R.T. Bear? You make your own R.T. Bear. You make him out of body parts of other people, like Frankenstein. Whoever wants to do that, get in touch with me later. Uh, I could use the free inking and the Frankenstein monster to play with. Um, so each tier comes to the black and white 25th anniversary trading card. I mean, he's really going all out. I'm thinking a lot about doing a um, 25th anniversary project for Spoof Comics uh, because that was a series I did, was a company I did actually, an imprint at my publishing company. A lot of really cool covers. Uh, Adam Hughes, um, a couple of guys we don't like actually anymore, Cully Hamner, a few of the other guys, uh, but really, really cool artwork and um, 
getting close to it. We'll see. But yes, 25th anniversary, nothing like it. That's the silver anniversary. Look at all this. This art is fantastic. Good for him. Good for him. This is super dynamic. Whose is this? That's Greg Capullo's? Wow. Get the Greg Capullo one. That one's freaking cool. Get all of them. But get the Greg Capullo one for sure. That is really dynamic. How awesome is that? Way to go. What a project. No wonder it's doing well. Really dynamic. Really cool looking. It's cool he's got the Vampirella black and white cover. I don't know what's going on with that. but Because he's got... It's a Vampirella comic, but he's offering it. He's got these really, really original, cool, original campaign goodies. Patches. He's getting the patches printed now. A bookmark. He really goes all out. Good for you, Art. It's freaking gorgeous stuff. Um, so if you guys have, you know, this is a good, this is a good project to back. I would recommend backing this. Let's take a look. We can look at the tiers. But uh, definitely share the campaign out when you see it around. It, it really, I know it doesn't really seem like a big deal, but believe it or not, when you just kind of retweet, um, it does, it helps the campaign a lot. And we don't do a lot on Facebook and Comicsgate, but share it to Facebook anyway. It's not going to hurt anybody. Um, you were expecting a Mohawk, Dale A. Um, I could have done something like that. That would have been more of a stretch goal type of thing. And then like the following day, get rid of it. That would have been a good use of my hair. Dale A., where were you? You had that expectation and that brilliant idea. Where were you when I needed you? You weren't there. You weren't there. So next time, please, Dale A., if you would, let me know your ideas in advance. I will review them. Hex Harper says, providing a Frankenstein monster sounds like something Preston Acevedo would help out with. Yes, Preston Acevedo probably has an extra one that he would lend me for a very reasonable price, or maybe even for free. He is the good Preston after all. Um, we rely on him to be like that. Um, let's look at his tiers. So what do you guys think of this? Is $110 too much for a featured tier? Word on the street is no. No, it is not. It is not too much. Uh, I'm starting to learn a little bit from my Comicsgate brothers. Like, look, people want to support you. And John Malin was telling me that because I have a featured tier on College of the Dead that's uh, fifty dollars, and John Mayle was like, "Adam, you know, you've got that ash can. Put it in about, you know, you think about it." And he was right. Of course, he was right. It's John Mayle. Um, So Art has three comics and a poster for one hundred and ten dollars. He has sold how many of these freaking things? He only has two left. I don't know how many he's sold. It's not telling me, but he's only has two left. Good lord! All right, you know, if you've got that money and uh, you want these last two, grab them. Uh, black and white graphic novel volume one, Greg Capullo variant cover, Vampirella black and white cover. Oh my God, total annihilation poster. How big is the poster? That's what I always ask. I don't think he says how big the poster is. Black and white is a 54 page uh, color graphic novel, by the way. That's also pretty cool. So a lot of these are 48. He's got the extra six pages in there, banging it. All right, so he doesn't say poster. He doesn't say how big the poster is. Well, maybe he does here. Uh, he doesn't. The item will be shipped in a poster tube. So it's going to be big enough that it's in a poster tube. So it's probably not 1117. It's probably like 2436. I mean, art, that would be amazing. It's good size poster. Okay. Good size poster. That sounds worthwhile. And it ships separately in a poster tube. And you get a black and white trading card, which is actually full color. It's the full color black and white trading card. Black and white is the name of the series. All right. I mean, that's pretty cool. Only two left. A uh, hundred claimed of black and white volume one. Interesting. So this is just the book it looks like, plus the color black and white trading card and signatures. Okay. So you get the book signed. Everything signed. Total bot annihilation poster. All right. Hold on a moment. Uh, receive one copy of the oversized. All right. There it is. 24 by 36. Well, that's not oversized. That's a standard poster size. Actually, 2235 is standard post size. So that's slightly oversized. Same size as uh, Ethan's poster for um, Rec Planet. Total Bot Annihilation poster signed by Art. Oh, signed by Art and one black and white trading card. That's very reasonable. That's very reasonable. 25 bucks signed by Art. And you get that full color poster. That is pretty good, Art. Good for you, man. I don't know. Let's see what the chat's saying about it. 
Uh, bing, bang, boom. Art said yesterday it was 24 by 36. Yeah, you put it in the description, and it's signed. It is a good deal. That is a really good deal. I love all the goodies you got in the first campaign. Yeah, Art delivers. Hi, huh, Lionel Ned. Hi, huh, guys. He really does. He's worth um, he's worth supporting. That's the thing, too, is you know, you buy the book, you get the book, but you're also making kind of an investment of keeping people in Comicsgate and keeping them engaged in Comicsgate. So that's why we kind of all look after each other and look at like, all right, well, what's your goal? How's the campaign going? I care how Art does on this campaign. I want to make sure Art does well. Um, if he doesn't do well, that's my problem as much as it's his problem because we, we need people like Art and Comicsgate. Uh, Vampirella Black and White. This is the Dynamite Entertainment's uh, black and white book. Three claim. Okay. It's Vampirella's black and white. So it's the Va Vampirella black and white variant cover. Um, but to be honest, I don't, I think it's Vampirella number one that's in there. I don't know what's on the inside, but you got Art's uh, signature on it. You got the trading card. Black and white killer bot tier at 600, 125 bucks. Seems very reasonable. It's got a whole lot of bunch of stuff in there. Buttons, trading cards, mini prints. But I mean, art. You really put the kitchen sink in here. And there's only 20 of them available. Six claimed already. An original, wow, drawing. So you get the black and white volume one with a new head sketch drawing of black and white done by Art T. Bear. Signatures by Art, Tag, and Pamela on the book. Fantastic. Fantastic. No doubt you're getting that trading card, which is a color trading card. It's black and white. And these are already sold out, these early birds things. I wonder, you think he should hide these maybe? Maybe hide these? Oh, the Greg Capullo variant cover is sold out? I wonder if you can still get the Greg Capullo variant cover some way. Someone bought the original artwork already for $1,800. He can hide them if they're not available anymore, right? I wonder if it includes, does anybody know if it includes the Greg Capullo, um, hey, Zade Comics, yo, 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 the lost pages found up in the house, KC Scott, I shipped your order, I remember your name because it's KC, hey, Zade Comics, so um, does anybody know if the Greg Capullo, I mean, I'm going to look too, but the Greg Capullo variant cover is included, can you get it, it looks like it's very limited. Maybe you should make a poster out of that. Well, all right. What about three comics in the poster? Greg Capullo variant cover. Okay, so it's also in. It still looks like it's extremely limited. So if you want that Greg Capullo cover, you got to grab one of the tiers ASAP with the Greg Capullo uh, cover. I also saw Art say someplace that these books were already in print. Um, and they're shipping. Okay, so they're going to all ship September 2020. So there's really no risk. Somehow Art already put these books in print. Yeah, here it is. Also, these books are printed and ready to ship right now. Bold letters. I would have gone all caps. You guys know me. I'm big with the capital letters. Um, all books are printed and ready to ship now. Darn it. Like it or not. But they're going to ship in September, even though they're ready to ship now. I, I, it's complicated. I'm sure there's reasons for it. You got to respect it. Um Capullo variant is the killer bot tier. Okay, thanks for that one, man. Yeah, uh, there may only be, you know, obviously there's only a few copies around of that one. So, I mean, obviously you got to work within your budget, but still, this is pretty cool. So I think, I guess he's got a limited number of these books. I'd like to ask him how many books does he actually have to um, fulfill this? Is it that limited? I guess they're in print. I'm a little, all right, I don't know the full story, but... But as far as what you guys need to know, I don't know the full story. I'm wondering, like, can he sell $100,000 worth of these books if the campaign does really well? Or does he have just very few of them actually physically available? That's a reasonable question. Um, and the answer to that question is probably some of them yes and some of them no. So just kind of get whatever you're passionate about, whatever you want to make sure that you have. Um, Zay Comics is eating... Uh, Rice Krispies. I have Rice Krispies treats. That keeps coming up. I don't know why, but every time I'm live, almost, every fourth time I'm live on my channel or someone else's, I find I'm talking about Rice Krispies treats. And I'm talking, not Rice Krispies, the treats, the squares, the rectangles that they make um, now that used to just be like mom would make them, but mom doesn't make stuff anymore. So you got to buy them in, in packages. They're pretty good. They're chewy. 
they're not big on calories. They're kind of reasonable. Is Lost Pages still active on the 26th? That's the soonest I can jump on. Zaid, Brother Zaid, are you going to be keeping um are you going to be keeping that campaign going uh by the 26th? Yeah, it has to be. I don't know. Should we look it up? Why am I asking you guys? Um I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be in demand, I'm sure. It'll be in demand. Don't you worry. Zay Comics will never let you down. That's what Zay Comics is all about. College of the Dead, this campaign has done really well. And, you know, I'll tell you guys some inside stuff. Why? Because I like you. And because I think it is really actually very interesting. So some people, uh, okay, let me take that down. Enough already. Um, Yes, it's open on the 26th. It ends the 28th, you think. Well, man, you got to know. Zay, you got to know. Phil, are you going in demand? There's that annoying. <laughs> I got to ask you. I got to bother you and tell you. So um, I'm sure it'll go in demand. Of course it will. If not, then I'm wrong, but I think it will. I'll bet I'll bet dollars to donuts because we Magic Op was in demand. Why wouldn't Lost Pages be in demand? So with College of the Dead, some people are asking me like, well, why are you doing zombie series? Why do zombies? Because can't you do like a superhero or um, your own like um, animal characters and stuff like that? And, you know, why don't you come up with a concept? You know, go ahead and live stream. Hey, Tungsten EXE, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, you have the one of the gigantic orders that I have to put together today and get it out. We're going to get out today. Um, Tungsten, I'm going to get, I will make sure we're in communication on your order because you have a slightly difficult receiving situation on your side in your foreign country. Uh, we're going to keep the book available to as many readers as possible. Oh, that is just like a PR answer. He's going to make sure you can buy that book because it's going to be a great book. And it's got a character in there called Hobo. Uh, and Hobo is very powerful. Oh, you're very welcome. Tungstein, you're great. You're great for CG. You're, you're great to me. You're just great to everybody. Everybody loves Tungstein or else, or else. That is my absolute threat be nice to tungsten gi jackrabbits gi jackrabbits is in the works um uh, it's going to be amazing when it's out so and i'm going to have all the work done by the time i when i publish it um dan frega offered and i accepted to do a cover for gi jackrabbits um it's gonna dan frega is amazing so i'm really excited about that uh, but i'm also looking at some other art choices because um it's complicated. It's complicated. And I'm also going to bring in, I think, another, um, some more uh, editorial uh, muscle to help us, uh, who's helped me in development sometimes before. I'm going to kind of go all in on G.I. Jackrabbits. I'm not just going to publish it as, hey, it's one of my comics. I hope you like it. Like, this is like something that was my first comic I published um, more than 30 years ago. I'm really passionate about it. Um, it got me into publishing. So it's got to be everything, like, to the freaking limit on GI Jackrabbits. I'm publishing that for me as much as anybody else. I want Chromium covers on that thing if I can nail it. So I'm working on it. I'm working on GI Jackrabbits. Um, but just like, like with publishing, a lot of people are publishing or they're publishing for the first time in Comicsgate. Some people have done uh, comics before. Like Ethan has a huge uh, history. He's, he's drawn many, many, many comics for professional companies, DC, Marvel, uh, indie companies as well. Um, but a lot of people are new to publishing. And uh, what Ethan is doing with publishing is what you should be doing. He's modeling himself after Todd McFarlane. He can produce at that level. He can promote at that level. He's going to be making toys and, and leveraging his popularity and his customer base and our movement to make it the most uh, successful thing for him that he possibly can do. That is what we should all be doing. We should all be figuring out, you know, what is our plan? What do we want to accomplish over the next year or two? Because Comiskate, it's not a matter of survival. It's a matter of prosperity and success. We can succeed as creators and publishers uh, like we never have before. The opportunity really is unlimited. People don't understand uh, how much the opportunity is, is there. So in publishing, you know, a lot of times if you're going to go into business, like any business, it takes a while to get going. You lose money. Um, you know, until you break even, you have a lot of extra expenses. It's not like that with publishing for Comicsgate. You know, it's it's the direct-to-consumer relationship 
is uh, really unbeatable. Yes, uh, there's Kickstarter uh, and people have some success on Kickstarter, but you can build a really, really successful company um, focusing on publishing for uh, the direct to consumer relationship that we have now with comics. Key. And what's more is even a lot of people we talk about mainstream comics, but a lot of people that buy comics that are interested in comics, uh, aren't even aware of comics gate yet. A huge number of people, probably at least 10 times the market for it. And that's before getting people interested in buying our comics, just because, um, you know, we are cool. We're fun to be around. Ethan had somebody on. Oh, Carl, thank you for the compliment. Yeah, I love Carl. Carlo wrote, Death Sworn, baby. Back Death Sworn if you're looking for a good time and a good comic and a good Carl. He's the best Carl we have, except for Chubb. They're about equal. So kind of like equal, equal Carling. But um, yeah, the, the opportunity to be able to, to make stuff you're passionate about, but to have the financial success. So uh, Chuck Rosansky. As a guy who has Mile High Comics, he knows a lot about comics. He's been in selling comics since the early uh, 1970s. MileHighComics.com, a little pricey, uh, but that's his business. But um, he has millions and millions of comics. He's been talking about the industry. You know, one of the things that um, Chuck talks about is, um, well, he talks about a lot of things about comics. But he was commenting recently on some of the distributor changes and some of the comics things going on in the industry and, and, and retailers going out of business. But one of the side comments he made, I thought was really interesting. He's been selling mail order since the 1970s. And he used to have those uh, pages inside uh, Marvel comics, like the two center spread pages that were yellow that had all the prices. That's mile high comics. He's been collecting people's addresses and selling uh, people comic books, back issues and new issues, but mostly back issues since like forever, like what, 1970s, like when I was born, like a million years ago, 40 freaking years. So he makes a side mention like, well, when I send out my email uh, blog mailer to my 100,000 uh, or so uh, people on my email list, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa what? 100,000 customers for My Life Comics. So keeping this in mind, 100,000 people on the mailing list for My Life Comics, it's a comic book store. It's a large mail order comic book store and it's legendary, but not everybody who's interested in buying comics is even on that mailing list. I am on his mailing list. I wasn't always on his mailing list. I don't read his blog. However, if you think about it, if he's got a hundred thousand names, how many people are there that are out there interested in buying, you know, comics through the internet comics, you know, mail order, He's got 100,000 people that are interested in being on his mailing list. There's got to be at least half a million, a million potentially, more that we can convert if we meet people through YouTube. A lot of people. So when we talk about like, well, what's the potential for selling comics direct to consumer, it's a lot more than what Ethan's selling. Ethan's going to do a million dollars on CyberFrog Rec Planet. Easily. It'll happen. And we'll help him get there. Um, and then he's got the toys coming out, the PVCs through Cyber. It's going to help more. But um, that's that's not 10% of the potential market. It's potentially a hell of a lot more. We don't need to do um, you know a million dollars on a comic on one issue to do well. We don't need to do five million or ten million. But it's amazing that the potential is really that big. Uh, <laughs> Vile Ned, I like that idea. A health man and a uh, pandemic crossover. The artist of Healthman and I are uh, friends, and he's actually got a book coming out soon, um, Chris Renkowitz, uh, through Comicsgate. Um, he did the cover of Healthman, and he, I think he actually did some of the interiors too. Uh, that was when we had our studio environment. But um, you know, as far as the, the uh, publishing goes, so the reason, getting kind of back to like, well, why am I doing zombies? My plan has been I'm going to publish things that I want to publish that I think are easily understandable, that have a potential to be an ongoing series. Because it, having been publishing for like a long time, one of the things that you notice is if you can create interest in a title, you know, in, in Zombie, this is the first one, you can create interest in College of the Dead book one, and you can uh, have a good creative team. And then you continue with that creative team for your next book. Your second book, because more people found out about it, Oh, 
I wasn't even expecting art anymore, but we, I love art. We let's get him in here. Um, our the second book can do a lot of business. You know, this second book has done five, six times what the first book did by this point. Um, it's not always going to be a factor of 500 or 600% increase, but it will increase, you know, and plus you can sell your backlist. This is, we can talk publishing with RT bear. Where's all right. Add to the screen. Get him in there. Hey, RDT. Hey, how are you, man? Sorry about the delay. Um, I was, no. Drinking late with my pontificator buddies last night. <laughs> Pontificating, no doubt. Yeah, we yeah. even have RT Bear to join me on this fantastic live stream. Art, um, great to see you. Uh, and it, you, you um, legitimized my title now because I delivered the haircut and RT Bear. Oh man, you! I thought you were going to grow it out. You said you were going to become like a long-haired hippie. You know what? I I had to take my son for a haircut because. Um, I take care of my kids and stuff. And I was like, ah, let me get the haircut. Yeah, I was thinking about it, but summer is not the time to grow your hair out crazy. Um, but it's it's amazing to be able to. Let's just put it that way. Not everybody can do it, Art. Not at our age. No, no not at our age. And we're 706 <laughs> combined. Well, Art is 50. Art, well, I don't know how old you are, but I'm 50. Art's 42. I'm as old as dirt. Art, Whatever, however old dirt is, that's how old I am. Vile Ned will confirm, and you know you can trust Vile Ned, that I did a beautiful job discussing black and white. Uh, Ooh, cool. Vile Ned, right? I did spend time talking. I didn't just not talk about um, black and white. I mean, God forbid. We, well, we I, literally, I literally just woke up. So where is black oh. and white at this point? I don't even know where it's at. Um, all right. But uh, College of the Dead looks like it's doing great. College Ooh. of the Dead is doing fantastic. Yeah, 14204. Well, I just refreshed it, so it wouldn't be different. It's at 14204. Um, and actually, I had a couple quick questions for you about this. Uh, so let's discuss this. Um, so first of all, the basic story of what uh, black and white is, you've told me before, but it's a spy thing, Yes. Yeah, it's a it's a spy action adventure, uh, sci-fi. Um, it's kind of like I, I think in 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 a nutshell, it's um, they're robot fighters. Okay, so they're robot fighters. So I, I kind of took out oh, okay, like like Star Wars. Like Star Wars is kind of like in a galaxy far, far away. So it's not really giving you a time or a year or a date. So so black and white is in a future a future that may or may not happen. So uh, we have we have giant robots, we have uh, we have supernatural things. You know what I mean? It's just a world that we can have a lot of fun in, but it's not necessarily our world. You know what I mean? So uh, Reed Blackett, AKA Black, uh, worked for the MI-10. And uh, MI-10 is like MI-6, you know, they're divisions of the British Secret Service. It's four and times so, better. What's that? MI-6 plus four. Plus four, yeah. This one's higher. This one goes to 11. Uh, oh. This one goes to 11, Adam Post. So, yeah. So, uh, the idea being is that there was an MI-10 in the war, in the Second World War, and they were um, they were tech and weapons. So, they developed mm -hmm. things. So, I thought I would resurrect MI-10. So, now MI-10 is um, their oh. anti-robotics task force. So illegal, um, like sentient robots, robots that can think on their own are illegal. So the world has created these entities to basically police against, um, you know, sentient robots. And so that's kind of the backstory for Reed Blackett. But he he was a spy, but he kind of got he was disillusioned with spy um, with being a spy. He's kind of Steve Rogers. So if you could imagine, I mean, they kind of played it up a little bit in the movies. Like you have Steve Rogers with his conscience being what it is, and then doing questionable things for Shield. Uh, he had a problem morally, um, and so Reed Blackett's kind of that guy. He's he's a real straight shooter, but he was in the world of like septifuge and 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 gray area, you know, life where. You know, you kind of kill without conscience. You uh, you execute orders without question. You know those type of things that make a good spy. So he retired from that. He well, he walked away from that world, and so he meets. Uh, well, he he creates uh, his own his his new life, which is as an importer importer exporter of fine commodities. So he's in China, and he's talking to small fledgling uh, uh, brewery. 
which is run by Whitney Sung. Um, she's an heiress to this brewery, um, which is uh, White, aka White. And so um, he's basically going to work with them. He's going to export and import their, uh, their fine commodity, their beer. And then what happens is you start realizing that uh, things aren't kosher, things aren't right. And that uh, Whitney Sung may have some uh, a dark past. She may have some, some things that, uh, some skeletons in her closet that come back to haunt her. And so um, what Reed does is he comes back, but not as a spy and not as a cop and not as anything like that. He comes back as, as a vigilante. Mm -hmm. So and, and then he has his own form of justice because as far as he was concerned, justice and, and things that he had been part of in that gray world um, didn't serve him. So to him, his new form of justice is black and white. So he sees things oh, okay. without the gray. He sees things in absolutes. So good, evil, that type of thing. And so he dons on an, an old suit, MI-10 suit, and then goes to try to help her. But what he realizes is uh, quickly on, he realizes that she's no damsel in distress and that she just wants vengeance but he knows what that life's like you know you take a life you you know it still haunts you every time you close your eyes you know all that stuff it still it scars you so he wants to save her from the life that he had so he basically loads this weapon and tries to aim her in the right direction you know what i mean so she doesn't do anything that she's going to regret but he realizes also that he can't control her so that's pretty much the first storyline. And then you realize that uh, because of her mindset and because she's just hell bent for vengeance, that that's not necessarily the right way to go about it. So, so she's going to have to start learning that she has to be part of the team. She has to listen to this guy, but not not be subservient to him. But that, you know, that he's been around the block. He understands these things. And it's a man's uh, world. And not necessarily, but, it's but a man's yeah. world. in this in this story, it's a man's man's world. Yep. Yeah, but but uh, she starts realizing that she has to kind of let some of that that anger go, and that she has to start embracing this maybe better way of of dispensing justice, this black and white uh, form of justice. Um, so she kind of learns to be a better. There's a better way to deal with this stuff. And so right. that, that's kind of the story. And there's a bunch of robots, and they blast a bunch of robots. And there's there's cool stuff with the suits and everything like that. But that's basically the, the story there. Very cool. Um, yeah. I really like this poster, and the coloring is fantastic. That's Kyle's coloring. Of course, yeah. Oh, wow. Really, 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 really cool. Um, now, this is a second chance campaign. So are these books printed? They are. I, I have some of them here. So I have I have the Greg Capullo cover here. I have, um, oh man, I just slipped down. I have one over here too. It's always cooler to be able to show the books. I'm covered in books, yeah. Wow. So I, yeah, have, wow. I have the books. And also all the stretch goal goodies. Um, I'll give your audience a shot at, like, this is, um, I did this design and then Taylor uh, put it into a graphic, like tightened it up graphically. Yeah. And then we made patches out of it. So this is the MI-10 uh, anti-robotics division task force. So this is what Reed Blackett used to be part of. So we actually made a patch. It's got the British flag in there. And it's got a robot and it says uh, MI-10 anti-robot. Yeah, oh, uh, I should have made you lie. Hold on. Uh, full screen on art. Can we do that? Yeah. Solo layout. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, even got, is really cool. Yeah. It's even got the, the crown here. Uh, task force MI-6. Um, I thought they came out really cool. Yeah. So then, then we have the MI-10. Well, not the MI-10, but the black and white um, yin yang. How, would, how, how do people get those? So this way. Um, in the, uh, I don't have it open. I forget what we call it. It's called That's the okay. robot something. Oh, yeah. The bots uh, here. Um, Killer bots here. Yeah. Yeah. That, that tier, you can get those added on. Well, they're not add ons, but they're in there. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, you can get them as you check out. So we have them as add-ons. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, so do you have enough for these books, you think? I mean, the campaign's doing great. 
Um, the campaign is doing great, and I will not have enough of the Greg Capullo variants. Sad to say. Did you? So what? You is this new art? Where did this Greg Capullo art come from? Um, do you remember like the old image books? Uh, Greg, it's funny how you know, like in life, you kind of connect with somebody, and then and yeah. then you're like really, really like fast friends, and it and it you know maybe lasts a year or two, and then you kind of just drift apart. Well, yeah. Greg, Greg Capullo and I, in about like 93, 94, 95, in, in the, those years, we were really, really tight. We hung out socially, family, everything. Mm. And um, and so he was working on Creech, and I was working on black and white. So I would help him ink, and he would help me pencil and draw. And so one thing led to another, and he put this pinup together. And you remember like the old image books, they would have like a centerfold and it was a big thing. And there would yeah. be like a, like a piece of artwork by some freaking awesome artist. So yeah. it wasn't like variant covers. Like we didn't do a lot of variants back then, but no. we did these cover, uh, like these uh, poster insets. They were like uh, centerfolds. They were double page. Yeah. So page that's what, yeah. That's what this originally was. And so I did a remastered version of a cable piece of artwork I did some years ago. And so it came out really good. I thought, well, maybe I'll remaster this great Capullo piece because I had the original still. So I scanned it and then I digitally um, kind of re-inked it. And then I got it colored up by Perea. And then we made it part of uh, the chrono, uh, the black and white, I'm sorry, uh, campaign. You may have to think about making more of these. It's a very cool piece, man. Yeah, I don't know. Since I got you here, and you you always have all the answers. I have all the answers. Should I should I go back to print on these Capullo, or should I just sell them out? Because I think need, I have like need, thirty left. You need to um, reformulate your question in the form of a question. Oh, I'm no, sorry. You're, you, I'm being facetious. No, you already did. <laughs> yeah, Barry Keegan, isn't it amazing? Eric Weathers, BattlebrickRoad.com, baby, get there. Back Battlebrick Road. Get yourself a golden brick. Get a golden brick. Join the Eric Weathers Club. It's the place to be. All right. So to answer your question, well, um, you know, I overprint a lot. When I mean a lot is not that that many, but when I when I printed um, College of the Dead, I printed about uh, twenty five hundred copies mm -hmm. uh, for the current College of the Dead. But our orders were around um, I don't know six hundred to seven hundred copies. And we have five different covers. We, we only offered four. There's one of them that is a um, special cover that nobody's, well, it's actually previewed in the book. But um, in any case, people haven't seen that book, that cover yet. But um, we did like, um, so I did a lot of extra ones, like that party attack cover with the girl getting attacked by zombies. When am I not going to be able to sell that cover? Right. You know, that's that's awesome. my choice. So you look at it, and when you're already printing, as long as you've gone from like you're doing more than say 400 copies, then your cost for an extra copy is very low. You know, it could be like a dollar fifty per copy instead of you know anywhere from three to five dollars per copy. So you have to look at it and say, well, how many of these can I sell either in a second chance campaign or as a backlist item, like an other item when you're offering the next book? Like, how many of these do I think I can sell over the next say six to twelve months? You don't want to produce books that you're going to have to the ceiling, but you know, you want to, you want to print them kind of while you're printing them. you you can certainly sell a lot more than 30 copies of uh, that cover. Uh, how many copies did you sell of the first book? Of the first, uh, say all uh, covers combined, or how many did you print of the first book? We printed, I think 1500 of the standard, uh, which is my cover. And then I think a thousand of the Capullo's. So we pretty so you, much. So your capacity to sell now, it, it, you have to think about this. If you're doing another campaign for Chrono Mechanics or another titles campaign, would you, uh, because you're RT Bear and people are interested in all of your RT Bear work, will you offer backlist items from your other campaigns that you still have in print? Man, oh. I, I haven't even really got that far. I, I was. Um, Very welcome, Rocket Simp, by the way, that you got yeah. your book. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you I haven't, haven't thought about it that much. Yeah, I haven't really, but I, I you know, maybe like, like do a Hack Shack Studios jam, you know, uh, campaign or something like that. No, no, not even that. So, for example, uh, you've seen the preview of The Mermaids, the trailer. 
Um, yeah, that's a killer, Adam. Thank you for sending that to me. Yeah, thanks for sharing with it. See, I wanted to talk to you and see you live in person what your response was. All right, he really likes it. Cool. Yeah, it's He's cool. Man. Being a friend. That's the great thing about Comicsgate. If if I send something out to a, to a Comicsgate person, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Rocket Simp, I actually did print the selfie cover. If you look, I don't know what page it is, but there's a page, a couple of pages in that does um, on the inside of College of the Dead that shows. Um, what all the covers are and all the books that are College of Dead related. Basically, it's like a checklist page. Um, it shows the selfie cover on it. I don't know if you can even you can see it clearly. Oh, enough. Selfie of Adam Post? <laughs> no, uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. All right, I'll do a full screen and I'll show it. Uh, where are you, Adam Post, on your crazy full screen? Um, all right. Carl, don't make fun of me. I'm doing the best I can with this. All right, so it's kind of like Oh, that okay. checklist. Yeah. So oh, where is she? Yeah, you can't really see her. All right. Anyway, you'll see it. I'll start promoting it. I don't know ideally when the best time is to check a chance campaign. But when we launch the mermaids, which will probably be the next campaign, um, you will be able to get College of the Dead. Oh, cool. Rockets have seen it. Very cool, brother. Also, you're um, gonna combine them like like uh, well, I'll just do it's gonna be the mermaids, campaign. but if you also if you missed it. This book is still in print and it's available. Whatever is still in print and available. Got you know, I didn't print like 50,000 of the things, uh, but I printed enough that like, look, I know the growth between book one and the growth between book two has been like 500%. So the growth between book two and the growth between to group book three is it's not going to reduce in popularity as I have a larger and larger platform. So I knew that if I overprinted, and I said, all right, well, we'll spend a little bit of money in extra stock. Um, we'll be selling these all the way through. We've done another, the campaign ended at 25,000. It's now done uh, 29.5. Uh, so, and without really a lot of promotion. So yeah, to me as publishers, we, we're selling two things when we offer a book. We're offering the front list new issue, but we're also offering backlist. And if we plan it properly, then we print enough that we're not flooding the market, but it's normal for a publisher to have a book in print and keep it in print for like six to 12 months at least. Right. You know, print enough that way. Cause the people buying, they, they're fi first finding out about college of the dead. Now, of course they want to ask like, well, is that the whole story? Like it's a complete story, but it's not the whole, whole story. You know, the whole story starts from the first book. So yeah, there's there's still some humans that need to be eaten. There there's still people alive, but <laughs> you want to see where the characters kind of came from, especially if you're writing in continuity. Uh, but even if you're not writing in continuity, people kind of want to have an act have access to have everything. And um, revenue wise, about two thirds of the revenue that we generated was from College of the Dead book two, and about one third of it was related to College of the Dead book one. But we sold more than twice as many of College of the Dead book one when we offered it in the second campaign. You should literally have a College of the Dead in the next edition where uh, like the diploma, they graduate, but they learn how to kill zombies. Like it's, it's uh, the curriculum has changed. This is a, that, to have a diploma, like yeah. you get your name on a printed diploma is an yeah. effing great idea. Yeah, and then and then they can go out and they'll be certified zombie killers. They you can, you can you could also have one of those uh, like those Debbie Dutson truck trucker uh, like um, uh, classes. Oh my god! So you I could have, sign you could, every diploma. You could have mail order classes for zombie killing and stuff like that. Just have an entrepreneur character uh, based on yourself, actually, um, starting up these colleges, Adam. Well, uh, I like the college diploma. A great yeah, way to give people blood, a, sign, a side piece. Yeah, get some blood like smudged on it. Yeah, because I'm looking at every possible way I can do it, Art. To be, yeah, isn't that great, Sparking Phoenix? Uh, oh, John, really glad to hear you got the books. Definitely let me know what you think of them, man. Um, I like the idea of a diploma a lot because you can customize it for the person and it's cool and they can frame it and we could do art design to it and actually make it visually like very cool. Um, so that's very, very cool. I also was thinking about a yearbook, like we having people included in a yearbook. Yeah, um, that'd be cool. But your diploma idea, 
that's better, really. I mean, it's great. That's easy to. It's important that we think about easy to execute too. You know, we don't want to just promise, "Hey, we're going to do all this," and like then you turn around and be like, "Oh my God, how am I going to get that done?" You know, such as as I'm now shipping like um, five pound boxes to Israel. Like, oh you, my you, God. you can ship five. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity, and it's still profitable, but it's it's more than twenty bucks to ship a five pound box to Israel. Art, yeah, it is. <laughs> as, as you know, <laughs> uh, it's it's not twenty bucks. It's it's not. There's yeah. no special discount for that. So you've got to be, uh, you know, you you, but you. It, it does more than average out. It works out fine. What, what's the craziest for me with the shipping is like you could have like China or you have, you know, Australia and, and there's, there isn't a one set price to just ship to Australia. Like mm. all the different regions within that country cost different. You know what I mean? The shipping is are different. You, are you using stamps.com by the way for your shipping? Um, I think my wife is printing the labels out, but I'm not sure how she's doing it. Definitely directly ask her if she's using stamps.com. They have a discounted rate that I learned about thanks to um, Mr. E, uh, Drew, uh, Captain Love Guy. Uh, and stamps.com has this program where if it's less than, like I can ship one comic and one graphic novel in an envelope, in a flat, uh, sturdy envelope with extra cardboard for protection and it's um, less money to ship that than it would be like as a regular package. Okay. So yeah, definitely. Um, or or if you want, I can talk to her. But ask her if she's using. Will they ship the Gemini mailers? Um, I don't know the answer to that question because Drew gave me the format of the uh, rigid envelopes and the. I, I may have to send you one like that just so you'll see what it looks like. Okay. But I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what the envelope, uh, envelopes look like. You mean like the cardboard, but they're flat, right? They got the flat. They're flat, but you you also add extra cardboard for protection. Uh, so it becomes like it's pretty much a brick. It's as good as a Gemini mailer as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, but you have to look at it physically and see. But And then also compare. You know, if something ever gets damaged to a customer, it should always be replaced. You know, it always do with us. Yeah, yeah, we always do. So yeah. I, I, I wait to hear. You know, if anyone ever has a problem getting something, but I love the pictures that. And you guys, if you can, I really appreciate the pictures on Twitter of you guys getting your books. I love seeing them. It's really inspiring. And then I look carefully at them. I'm like, that's like absolute mint, perfect condition. Yeah. And I personally package the boxes, and it's different when you let a fulfillment center do your books. And now, we, uh, like Ethan prints with a company called uh, Transcontinental Printing out of Canada. They're very high end, and they were DC's printer, comic industry printer, very high quality. But if you're not printing with Transcontinental, um, outside of that, there are very high quality printers. Mixam does a beautiful, beautiful job, but you do have to put an eye on those books on every copy and make sure because their QA is not exactly the same. You have to make sure it's top notch. College of the Dead is probably the only school not closing due to COVID. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely going to give people college uh, degrees from College of the Dead. Oh, that yeah. is such a freaking good idea. I have a logo too that's a very cool um, badge type of logo for College of the Dead that mostly we haven't used. Um, that is just going to look great. I'm really excited about that. But our, uh, to answer your question on, on the copies, Whatever you sold initially of um, your book, you could have sold and you could still continue to sell at least 100% of that over time. If your, if your campaign is in demand and if when you're listing chrono mechanics, like who would have been offended if you still had the Greg Capullo cover available for sale? Nobody. Nobody would have said like, oh, no, there's the Greg Capullo cover. I don't want to buy this campaign. They would right. have said, oh, add on, add on add on like people would continue to buy it so as right. far as doing a new printing or anything it's a different it's a different thing to kind of think about but um in terms of the risk there's no risk it's so weird like where my head was at like a year ago you know as far as doing these campaigns and where it's at now we have learned so much and also there wasn't quite the the committee the group that there is now because everybody has green rooms we're all talking we're all sharing information and brain trust I yeah, love it. A year and a half, two years ago. Yeah, we really didn't, nobody really knew even, you know, 
uh, what they were going to do clearly, what printers, you know, how the best way to do stuff was. So now, um, I mean, it's almost becoming a science. You know, everybody is. It, 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 there's, a, there's art and then there's science, but there are things that you can't disagree. You know, there are numbers and there's, there's exactly what you said, a science. There's a method to look at to figure out like, hey, you know what? Here's what works. Here's what doesn't work. Here's what worked for me and why. Um, and, and we can kind of all kind of reflect and see what common experiences are. Um, I used to have a staff, like I used to have at our, our publishing company in the early nineties. I had someone for marketing. I had someone for PR. Um, and uh, I was the publisher and I was still me back then. Didn't know quite as much, but I knew plenty and worked with a team of our people and stuff like that. But you can't get the same feedback that you can get from other entrepreneurial self publishers that, you know, with internal people working for you. Plus we don't pay each other, you know, not right. with cash anyway. Charlie says any 20 pound package into Israel has to be checked for extra explosives. Jeez. Um, mine is only five pounds, but yeah, that I didn't know that. And that's damned uh, interesting. Oh yeah. John, you did. John said, uh, you tweeted, uh, the package picture to me. Thank you for that. John, the comics were perfect. The package is fine. One of the edges uh oh, was a bit rough, but the Gemini mailer inside was mint. Perfect. Bing, yeah. bang, bippity boom, baby. Yeah, and yeah I want to hear the box. Bit. The box that the book's in is oversized. Like it's bigger than the comic itself. And usually you can't go wrong because the, the corners might be dinged, but it won't ding the book. Yeah, like occasionally you get a Gemini, Gemini mailer while you're packaging where their little tiny corner is ripped off. And even it doesn't, it it because it's all like, you know, machine cut, cardboard, whatever, and scored. And, and, uh, I'm not even going to like, it wouldn't affect the packaging at all, but I'm not going to send that to somebody to right. a package. They spend 60 or $70 or whatever, you know, buying a couple of our books or something like you're going to send them a package. It's not clean, you know, and uh, it's, it's better than the first go round for college of the dead, because I did use a fulfillment company or another company that did the fulfillment on it. And I couldn't put eyes on every package and it makes a difference. I think Ethan's doing the right thing for himself. Like, even though it's going to be a massive task, of taking on all the fulfillment um, because he's going to put eyes on every package. That he's going to know that him or someone in his family is making sure everything is perfect when it goes to a customer. And it's not just because we're great guys, which we are, but it's because you guys are spending a lot of money on our stuff. We don't want to lose you as a customer. You know, we, we want you to be uh, really happy with what you're getting. And that's well, we, how know these things are, we know these things are collectibles too. So we know well, the thing is we're shipping. Yeah, exactly. We're shipping collectibles. You yeah. know, I was, I was talking to my, my printer mix him about it and they need to replace a couple things for me and not a couple things. There's one book they have to do. They have to replace some copies on because the thing is, is it's, it's, it has to be perfect, you know, and I, I would really suggest, and I I've said different things about this in the past, but until I'm sure uh, of something different, um, I would really suggest we all take on our own fulfillment. It's not as bad as, as we think it is. Uh, it's certainly not as bad as I thought it was. And we can, anybody wants to hit me up privately uh, at Comics We Love or, or I'm thinking of this idea. And Chad, you can tell me what you think too. I have been, I'm going to be getting back into doing more live streams and more of my YouTube. Um, and I know it's important to be entertaining and you know fun and all that. But I'm thinking... Crumbs to Lord Mayfield. Nudity. Juice. You're thinking nudity, right? Well, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking of basically talking about my comic book company because I'm not just publishing a comic. Like I'm organizing myself into a comic book company. Again, I've done it three times before. Uh, I haven't done it really in the last 20 years because the comics market has been on a decline. At least for me, it was. There are people that did well, you know, in the two, in 2000 to 2010. I don't know how Nick from Dynamic Forces is able to, well, Dynamite Dynamic Forces, both his companies, how he's been able to be so successful. Uh, but, you know, for me, the opportunity just really wasn't there. And, you know, like Ethan or anyone else, I'm looking to do this to be really, really financially successful. Uh, but, uh, you know, the opportunity is really, really there to do it, to be able to spend the time on it. Uh, so yeah, I'm thinking for me, I want to do a live stream about me working on my comic book company, you know, and you're part of it art because, you know, I can't do my comic book company without talking to other people who make comics, right? You know, whether we directly collaborate on a project, you know, or not together, uh, there's a lot of ways of doing that, but we're all kind of collaborating as it is. I think it's interesting as hell. 
before you came in, I was talking about how, um, you know, the, the market for what we're doing is much, much bigger, you know, than we could even dream or realize, you know, Ethan's going to do his million on cyber frog. A but million, a million. This but is, it's, it's, we're, it's, we're just throwing these numbers out like a million in comics. It, the thing is, that's a million. Dollars. It's, it's phenomenal. It's <laughs> phenomenal. But at the same time, the potential is there to do five, 10, 15 times that. I was talking about Mile High Comics. You've heard of Chuck Rosansky's mail order company, Mile High Comics. Yeah, I've actually uh, done book signings there. And Chuck actually. Chuck was one of the early pioneers of what we're doing. He had a uh, cable, you know, like like Wayne's World kind of cable station, mm -hmm. and he would have artists on and interview them. And oh, I didn't know he was doing that. that. Yeah, this was years. It's like 25 years ago, and I've, I've been on a couple of his programs way back when, so it was a blast. Wow. Yeah, he was talking about uh, current industry stuff, but one of the things he just, you know, just uh, said um, – off to the side was, you know, so my list of 100,000 uh, email subscribers to my blog, and then he was saying whatever he was saying, and what he says is very interesting, and he knows a lot of history, but he's got 100,000 people who are comics, mail order buyers, yeah. signed up to his blog. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, Ethan, I, he has a number of individual customers. He doesn't have 100,000 people, you know, who are on an email list who are interested in comics or comics gate. Um, yeah. He doesn't have been, yet. No, he'll. We're we're all going to build a successful customer bases, and that's the whole point. Is is that it's yet? You know, not everyone who is a comics fan who would buy mail order is already on Chuck Rosansky's one comic book store email list. Obviously, so so the size. If, if Chuck had twenty percent of the market, and not all of Chuck's people that are on his email list. First of all, all of them are customers. There's no purpose in signing up for his blog right. Right. unless you know you're, you know, you've bought comics from Mile High. I bought comics from Mile High for various reasons, as a fan, as a publisher. Um, I don't know if you have or, or or you haven't, but most all of us sort of have. Uh, but even the people who have been his customers are not people who are all uh, on that list. So he's probably got 300 percent, at least three times the number of people who he's got their email address he's done business with. But even that, he's uh, people don't all know who Mile High Comics is. You know, so it's probably 20% uh, of the potential existing market, which doesn't even include converting people, say, from interest in Star Wars over to comics. You know, and we're producing such compelling stuff. When Ethan does toys, toys have their own... I'm, gonna, I'm working on toys too, Art. We have to talk. Their own... Uh, yeah, but toys have their own collectors, you know, their own huge market of collectors. Are people going to be interested in buying cyber frog toys who are only toy collecting people who are then going to be interested in cyber frog comics? Of course, they are. You know, they're going to spend 50 75 dollars on some high end collectible toy. Of course, they'll also be interested in spending an extra 25 to 200 dollars, right? Uh, you know, to get the related uh comics to that toy. So the market is um, is you know phenomenal for us. It's it's tremendous as long, but we do want to think as publishers and try to figure out okay, how do we plan our releases for our um, projects? You know, how what is a reasonable schedule that we can release on? And for me, having the books done in advance, um, I'm not even going to say whenever possible. Kind of always is what gives me the position to be able to say, yeah, I'm going to come out. And um, I'm going to release this book then and that book then, um, you know, and have kind of a plan. A public um, schedule. Yeah. yeah, you you want to you want to do that. And, but but to get back to it, um, I, that's what I really want to talk about on my live streams. Is this kind of stuff about you know publishing the books? Uh, there's some things you should and shouldn't uh, discuss. Obviously, you're not going to do up any really uh, you know customer information or anything like that. But um, some of the decision making, like you and I are talking about this Greg Capullo cover, there's no reason you shouldn't have a thousand or two thousand of those. Those are thirty five dollar books, right? Yes. So why not have seventy thousand dollars worth of inventory? It'll cost four thousand dollars at most. Uh, well, that may not be correct, but it's it's roughly. Uh, yeah, it's not going to cost four thousand dollars to have two thousand uh, copies of those. Uh, so. 
Yeah, probably you know, not. Yeah. It's it's not a it's not a bad uh, investment to have a product that everybody likes, and then to also list that on every campaign. Uh, there are people that bought one. You know, I was looking at it. I'm kind of surprised Indiegogo doesn't allow us to offer to backers. Do you want two of this item, you know, or three of this item instead of one? Well, they have the add-on section now, which I've taken advantage of, which we didn't have a year ago, which is pretty cool. So when they check out, you know, you can have suggested items. So we have the are those even single? I mean, I've done I've I have as well. I mean, I was surprised going through the list. I, mean, I saw some people like backing the 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 you know this cover or some of one of the other covers, but particularly this cover, like yeah, they backed it twice or three times individually because they wanted to get they want to support you, which is great sometimes too. Because I remember on my first campaign, I saw that like um one of the um, YouTube guys had backed me like a couple of times and I thought it was a mistake. And I messaged him, I'm like, hey, I'm sorry, I think you might and there he's like, No, man, I'm just supporting you. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, but you want to make sure people get what they want, right? But yeah. um, but yeah, um they do, I guess they have the add-ons, but does the add-ons, they let you reflect quantity in the add-ons as well? I'm not sure if they do. I don't know if it's just one, you know, you can just add one on or, or yeah, I think, it, I think you're probably right. But we, we have the, the stretch goal items <laughs> now from the original campaign. What's this? Charlie Schnoggin says it was a joke about packages going to Israel. Uh, all right. I don't um, know anything about it. <laughs> I don't know anything about anything. Um, yeah. Charlie's just starting shit man he's just a shit starter all right nothing wrong with that <laughs> he's still all security details the middle east uh, i do know that i'm going to buy art's book today i like that idea yeah i like that you. idea yeah thank it, you yeah. yeah um so the answer to me is the answer for me is there is no financial risk if you want i will assume the financial risk you can give me half the profits that's a publisher for you um uh, for printing the uh, Greg Capullo cover. It's a gorgeous cover. And I think it's in the realm of um, maybe another poster too. I mean, I was looking at that and like, yeah, damn. People, people have mentioned uh, possibly making it into a poster as well. So I have a lot to think about. I think I, I and because of you, thank you, by the way, that uh, the Chrono book is being printed by uh, Maxim or Mixum. I mean, Mixum. Okay. <laughs> And and uh, we're going to get our um, what do they call that? The little mock-up. We're going to get that to uh, yeah, the prototype or whatever. Um, we're going to get that next week, and so we're probably maybe two weeks from getting the book back from them. Because also, what people don't realize is because um, I thought the only place you could get good deals is like um, if you printed out of China or if you printed in Canada, Mexico. But uh, what Mixum does is uh, it's a British company, right? If they're they're based, not... they're based out of the UK. And then, um, and then what they do is they work with individual printers, and so that they can find a regional printer that lives or works in your area. And so what they they do is they give them the order, they print it, and then they ship it. So usually it's within the same state. So the printer is printing your book within the same state that you live. Well, so shipping is cheaper and it takes less time. Well, all right, your printer is going to be, they told you they're using their California operation. Yeah, for it's like Glendale or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you know how many you're printing? We're printing, I think, a thousand of the of the Chrono books. Yeah. Okay. So now, what I want you to think about is, look at their pricing for printing um, an extra hundred, and then go look at an extra five hundred and look at an extra thousand. Okay, I want to ask you this though, because I know where you're going. Is okay. Let's just say the Greg Capullo book again. All right. What I, I haven't printed that with. Mix them. So mm -hmm. I did that with Global PSD, you know, way back when, or last year, I should say. And so if I went to mix them, would they do 100 books? Would they do 200 books? Those are small print runs. Do they even do anything like that? Yes. It's right on their pricing calculator. Okay. It'll just now, cost you more per, per book. Well, you go to mixam.com, you select comic books um in terms of their products um at 200 copies you'd be paying 
probably five dollars per copy, maybe six dollars per copy. Um, it's going to be printed. Uh, if you're doing more than 350, I think it is, but easier to say 400, it'll be printed offset with a, a traditional printing presses. If, okay. it, if you're doing less than 400, they'll give you an option. Well, if you're doing 400 or more, they'll give you an option for digital offset. Offset is like fractionally higher quality usually. Okay, um, digital. Want. That's, that's almost, like almost not noticeably, really. I mean, I have no problem printing things digital. I, they look beautiful. The the paper is great. The bindery is great. Um, no issues. Well, the paper stock's the same in everything, right? It's just it's just printed in a different paper way. Paper stocks can vary fractionally, you okay. know, by plants because different manufacturers call yeah, it. I mean, I mean, one thing or another. It's, it's essentially the same, not noticeably, unless you're a maniac. Right, and it's not because of the printing process. It's just the preference of the printer themselves. Uh, it, it's their source of their – the paper differential is the source, their paper source. Right. Um, and, and the paper that goes into an offset press could be different than the paper that goes into a digital press. Uh, just a quick question from John. Uh, any chance of playing cards set in the next campaign? Maybe one side of the zombie and the other side pre-zombie human. That's an interesting uh, idea. Wow, that's high concept. That's cool, John. Yeah, I'm going to save that idea, John. Uh, maybe, now that you mentioned it. Um, pretty damn cool. Adam, you got some people, some good I know, people. there's a lot of well, smart people. Chat, they came up with, someone in the chat came up with College of Dead Spring Break. Hey, you I, guys I, come I, over to my YouTube and give me some ideas, too. Yeah, we got to start Art up a little bit over there. It gets silly. No, uh, yeah, definitely follow Art T-Bear's uh, channel. Art has a lot of cool uh, different kind of stuff that he does on his channel. All right, so the difference, offset and digital is basically the same quality. You're not gonna notice the difference. If you think you are, you're pretty much not, unless you use like some magnifying glass. Um, when they print digitally, they print out of Maryland usually. Um, the quality is good, uh, the packaging is great, um, but there is something that when you're setting your print run, I gotta tell you, which is they, when I spoke to them, they told me they were gonna give me an overrun of five to 10%. I haven't seen an overrun in my counts of my books. And that makes me a little concerned uh, because there are always going to be damages in shipping. You right. know, they package them like main, like I'm looking at the packaging that came from uh, the digital operation. Cause I had the, the ash cans and my art books printed digitally in Maryland and my interiors were printed in um, interiors. My regular comics, the color comics were printed in one of their plants in Canada. Uh, because that's what was efficient. So according you know, to them, and I'm sure they're right. So the ones that were printed digitally um, out of Maryland, they were packaged with shrink wrap, not shrink wrap, but they packaged them in, in like packets of five beautifully. And then they um, had all of this bubble wrap and whatnot. But when they ship UPS, UPS does tend to throw the boxes around. So I had to deal with anywhere from like three to five percent damages which is not a horrible thing but when you need the copies to fill the orders it's a problem and, yeah. and I, I also look at it as well as like you know every one of these that i don't get is 25 bucks so if you're paying five bucks to print a book and i don't get one of these because there's a corner damaged um that's a 25 dollar loss so right. you know that they, that that you have to account for that. So even though I've you're been in really really fortunate so far, um, like all the black and white books were pristine. Um, so I've I haven't crossed that bridge yet uh, where I got damaged uh, property. Well, if, if they're coming from UPS rather than truck shipment, and that'll depend on the weight of what is being sent to you, and you can select your options. But if they're coming by UPS. And they're only coming from Glendale. I mean, actually, I don't know how far. Is it like two hours from you? I don't know where that it, might be. It's maybe hour, depending on traffic, you know, an hour. An hour. Or, yeah. So you could actually not. Uh, what I would do in your case is I would, I would say for the delivery purposes, see if you can work out a custom delivery solution. Like wherever the plant is, they for an hour, they use delivery services. You know, probably like 100 bucks. You know, or we had it all worked out, Adam. I mean, it was so reasonably priced, the, the ground transportation, everything. So um it's it's all good. set. 
So, so, so uh, just to account for damages, just in case you really want your print run to be 10% uh, more than what you know you need. You know, then when you, if you're like, look, we could probably sell a thousand. Don't lose a hundred. Look at the freaking Greg Capullo cover. You could be selling those all day long for 35 bucks. Ha, um, have you, when you have a problem, do you just send those back the damage and say these were damaged or take a picture? And then do they make it right? Do they print you that many again? Or do you just write it off on your taxes? Forget the tax part. Um, you know, your expense is your expense. You know, you pay for printing, you're deducting that on your taxes. Um, as with regard to replacing uh, damaged books, it depends how many there are. And it, right. it depends your discussion in advance with them. And it depends how, you know, how significant the damage is. Um, I had an issue with College of the Dead book one with them. Uh, and there was exactly what the issue is. I don't know. Um, but they have to replace uh, the copies. It's going to be like a, about 150 copies or, or 300 copies or something like that um, because um, it, it, it was just very obvious that something happened in the bindery or whatever the heck the hell it was. They're going to solve it for me. I talked to them about it. Um, when you have a problem, you just want to communicate with them. You're probably dealing with Dave over there. Um, yeah, actually, it is Dave. Yeah, my wife act, a, a, absolutely loves that dude. Like she's, she's very nice dealing with a lot of it. Yeah, he's very personable. Like he he likes to tell stories. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, he appreciates the business. Um, so if you have an issue, just communicate with him about it. My suggestion though is just to account for damages, just in case you want to be over um, five percent, uh, at least ten percent. Really, not at least ten percent, but. 5% is reasonable, then you know you have the copies and the marginal cost is not that bad. Well, most you know, of the printers, like like the printers that I've, I've used in the past, they usually overprint anyways. They always make it seem like yeah. they're doing you a favor, but in in reality, I think they're just covering their butt because they know so, sometimes I mean, you're just damaged. You don't want to, you don't want to assume that um, because as I've been saying, I haven't really, I haven't gone and I had to very carefully go through every copy of College of the Dead. That's one of the uh, book one. The other ones are almost all perfect, um, yeah. all the color books. But the ones that I just felt like weren't right for the customer, um, it was like a third of the run. It was pretty substantial. And I overprinted because I know I'm going to be selling those books. Right. Um, you know, even by the, by the time I get to College of the Dead 3, I will have sold out. I'll have to do second printings of... Um, of College of the Dead 2 and College of the Dead 1, I'm sure, because we keep selling. Well, I, uh, I, have, I have a quick question about the Capullo cover because I'm actually trying to figure all this stuff out uh, live. This is probably not the best place, but- No, it's fine. Uh, I, I think like, Smirking Phoenix is saying quality information, by the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, oh, good, good. This, you guys, this, guys this is what I want to, tell me what you think of it. If you, if you would, I appreciate it. Even if it's not, like I'll make jokes and be funny and art's adorable and everything too. So, but- you know, we can talk about news and, and um, some drama here and there, but I like talking about the publishing stuff. Yeah. It helps people it's fun. Yeah. I think it's I think it's interesting. And it's also like it's like a real it's like an actual reality show narrative where it's like this is the story of my comic book company. Well, we're creating this stuff, right? I mean, this you talk about transparency, you know, uh, you know, because that was a big thing marketing uh, a couple years back. It's like we are total transparent, you know, a company. Holy shit, Adam! <laughs> you are completely transparent, man. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not dragging Mick Sam and saying anything. I love Mick Sam. I think they're great people. I've dealt with a lot of like they're good people. They stand behind their product. There are a lot of opportunities for all of us with Mick Sam. Uh, I want to get us. I, I, look, I, I, they're great people. And it's, it's not about if you ever have a problem in a business relationship, it's about what the other guy does about right. it. Right. I, I tell my daughter that all the time. It's, it's not like, it's not that you're going to hurt somebody's feelings or you're going to make a mistake. You will, but it's what you do afterwards. It's yeah, how you take it up to that person. Yeah, and that shows you who the heck, who the hell you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. That's how you judge people, not on what they say and not even what they do. It's like what they do when something goes wrong. Right. You know, it's to show if they value the relationship or not. They're starting to kind of learn and understand that the comics market's actually pretty freaking uh, big. Yes, Optimus. I did. I did get a haircut. It looks good, too, by the way. Uh, I, I liked your hippy-dippy uh, hairdo the other day, but this, this is looking good, too, my friend. This is what's going around about me. I don't know how I feel about it. 
Um, I'm being told I'm I'm a professor. I have to go back. I love all these comments. So you like hearing about the publishing stuff. Thank you, Dale. Yeah, I want to make I can make it fun. I promise. We can get creators. We can kind of negotiate. I, I may even negotiate with somebody on the phone. Maybe you'll hear me call mix in. <laughs> That'd be funny, man. Yeah, like, and, I, and I, I, I can get some people on the phone that I can't get on live streams that are. Adam of- will bust balls uh, with these printers on on the phone. That'll Take them an offer you can't refute. They can't. What do you mean thirty seven? I said forty seven. Exactly. <laughs> Art said 47. None of us knows what that means. Just say yes, Art. It's okay. Then get it's, code. Code. it's code. It's um, code. I do have to ask you and your lovely chat. Um, okay, so the Capullo books, I, 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 when I put them up, I, I limited the tier because I only, at the time that I did the campaign, we had 120 books, only 120. We since did a, a, a count, so we have 130 books, but I'm going to keep 10 of those aside. So... We have a few more to offer, but I mean, you know, like maybe 10 or 20 books tops. So if I, and, and those tiers are limited, like I said. So if I bring more Capullo, like if I go back to print and bring more Capullo books, does this look kind of like, uh, like maybe I was false? How, what's the right way to present it is your question. Exactly. So like, like, we're we're going to, you're going to deal. All right. So how do we present it? And we'll put that to the chat and we'll talk about it. And of course I have brilliant ideas about that. Uh, Adam is a consummate professional. That's going around about me. I kind of like this professional nickname. I appreciate it. Uh, the real publishing info is helpful from Matt Yaki, who is a phenomenal colorist uh, who does hey, work Matt. with the great Dan Friga. Um, you guys are both brilliant. I mean, how can you disagree with these comments? The only thing that would make it better is if it was like a $100 super chat. Only kidding. Uh, <laughs> that was really this kind of you. For my ego. Oh, you know, super chat this. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, we're not good at everything. I can't tell you how to bet on football, but I know about this publishing stuff because I've been through it so much and, and seen so many things happen and seen the actual results of it. Like, I'll tell you what, like that, that is fun stuff to talk about for me. And it's, it's, um, I like problem solving and puzzles and stuff. So uh, you guys are both brilliant. I love hearing about the aspects of process for you too. Thank you very much for that. Your, um, your earth mind. It's really appreciated. Optimus. Yes. I did get the haircut. We're going to solve this issue with, um, with that cover. It's nice to get the inside dope. Yo, 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 yo. Smirk from Phoenix is laughing. Uh, literally, who else is going to discuss this? Carl? Yes. Carl, I don't know. So. <laughs> Carl doesn't like this being discussed. It's not funny enough. No, Carl's cool with it. Um, I, I Carl's like too Carl busy being punk rock. Yeah, I like. I really like Carl. He's a good kid. And I got to keep him on the straight and narrow. Uh, oh, RPS got your books yesterday. Need an Art Bear sketch in my Capullo variant. Bing, bang, boom. We could do that. Yeah. Wow. We do that. Wow. We really could. We really could. Um, I, could do, I could do add-ons for sketches. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But we could make that product a version. You could do that as its own campaign, probably. You know what I could do? You know, because you were saying um, the Power Capullo Power. as a as a print. I could possibly do a jam like a Capullo variant, like uh, you know, tier with uh, the poster print. Well, let's let's we will get into it. Uh, uh, Lord Juke says a uh, two trial power panel, a power panel, the two of us, Adam the pro and Master T Bear. Yeah, man. Yeah, but we should be publishing together. Hey, Adam, let's do let's do the the fist bump. Ah, uh, oh, okay, oh. boom, yeah. boom, and they go pew. explosion. That's what um, the kids do these RP, days. RSP mystery got your books. So psyched about that. I think you already put them out on Twitter. If I'm remembering wrong. Art's a master class artist to me. His chops are legendary in my comic collection. And we're not talking about the Seattle zone. His uh, skill set is what we're talking about. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, what are we going to call these streams like the Art Adams uh, live streams? Oh, <laughs> Art, Art, <laughs> Art Adams. <laughs> yeah, we got to make good on that. That is really funny. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what. We can we can do some amazing stuff. I don't even know why I keep saying that. I'm not from Alabama, but I'll tell you what is a fun expression. The fist bump was powerful. That's true. The fist bump was powerful. All right. So first of all, here's how you work backwards from, from problem solved. Okay. There are issues involved with saying like, well, I said it was limited and technically now this is a second print. So I don't know. And what am I going to do? And like, all right, those are issues. They are put, they are on the table. You know, it's important. If you do a second printing, it should be marked as a second printing okay. or it should be differentiated in a way that it's a different version of something else that it's not a second printing 
of the first one. It's a different version of the first one. So that's that's TBD to be discussed. The first thing is 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 the the highest order of the issue, which is two old dogs. Um, the highest order of the issue is that you have, like I do, a gorgeous cover that people are interested in, and there's no way you're going to have enough to to satisfy it. You right. sold a thousand initially of the first one. Yeah. So if you sold a thousand of it, you sold a thousand of it already. Well, between the two campaigns, yeah. So if you're going to do this as a publisher, there are people that, for example, like they have a very specific reason. I don't just I don't have any disrespect for it, but if you could do it as a publisher, like um, uh, Matt Wanger, my friend, uh, did Carl's cover, uh, a, a version of Carl's cover where there were only like I think 200 printed is extremely limited. He doesn't want it to be offered, you know, beyond that. He just wants it to be a high end limited. That's you know very important to him to have it be a limited thing. If right. it's extremely important to only have people have a certain number and and to make that like hyper collectible, and that's what you're doing, you're doing it for that specific purpose. It makes sense. If you're doing books as a publisher that wants to have their books be available and, and be in print, if people want it, um, then you do something different. And so this would be a case like with this, like when I do this, maybe I'll do a green bikini top if we do a second printing and it'll be the green bikini top version, whether or not I call it a second printing, people will know it's, it's different. Um, right. and I would describe it as such. And that would be a separate issue. Would people still want to buy this if she had a green bikini top? Um, you know, it, what's interesting is, I mean, you can kind of do, you can change characters, uh, clothing and color, uh, relatively easily. Um, do a version Greg Capullo cover. Okay art for the next printing. Did you not make that one a virgin cover? Ooh, I do have the line art. I could well, I, I could do a line art variant. Um, also, I don't know how people feel wait, about this, but I, I, the, I line art, the, the line art variant, the black and white version of the covers, like those line arts, you've sold some, you've actually produced and marketed them recently. It, I don't know that the black and white versions are what people are looking for. I, I like what Vilenet said just here. Well, I'll pay in his freight. Uh, do a virgin Greg Capullo cover art for the next printing. So, also without the logo. Yeah. I'm just talking about it. Just don't put the logo on it. Yeah. That, you know, that's what, and, and this is interesting because that's exactly what John Malin did with his excessively successful Graveyard Shift 2 variant. Graveyard Shift 2, the Andrew Huerta cover, which is fantastic. I backed it was offered with a logo on it and then was offered as a virgin cover because he sold out the amount, the quantity that he had. Well, I think that's what I'm going to do. Cause I, I was thinking of doing something like put a little second chance, like, like logo on the cover or something, but I think actually I like doing that. it as, as the virgin without the logo is well, that, a pretty cool idea. Yeah. I, it's, that's, that's a great one. Uh, Tungstein, who we all must listen to. Uh, I do respect Tungstein. Uh, says marketed as a second print. The title can be of a different color, so people can tell. Well, uh, if it's a ver if it's obviously if it's a virgin cover uh, and there's no logo, then people will know. Um, I can tell you what John Malin did. Okay. And not just what John Malin would do, and what the response from the market was. What John Malin did was exactly what we just described with Graveyard Shift. He took off. The uh, he did a he did a logo unless he did it in reverse and I'm missing it. I don't think he did. I think he just did the Andrew Huerta variant and then he did the Virgin cover. I know there were two different ones. Uh huh. Um, and he did that because more people wanted it than he had books to sell. So for you, it would be the Virgin cover um, edition. The problem with the line art is cool, and you could do the line art as well. I just know they're very collectible, like the line art, but I don't think they sell as much, but yeah, they are very collectible. Well, the way you'd handle it would be this. You do both. You do a variant uh, that's full color, and then you can have the set that includes the line art version or, or for the line art version separately. Actually, if they're going to sell uh, more that way, or if they're going to be like less popular, maybe you make the line art something that you can only get if you're buying both of those two covers. 
Well, we did that with the Vampirilla black and white. So there was the the standard, then there was the virgin, and then there was the black and white edition. And the black and white editions always sell for a little bit more, I think $5 more per cover. Yeah. So you, you could do, did you have them as only as a set or did you have them in, available individually? I think, I think on that campaign they sold individually, but there was a, a discount uh, for the bundle of the three, I believe. Okay, well, you can always go back and look and see how you'd want to offer it. Yeah, I mean, at the at uh, there are people that would probably want it because it's Greg Capullo's art in particular, and it's probably very collectible. And also, there was an article written a few months back that's that where they were going over all the the different covers that Greg Capullo did over the years, and actually, that cover was in the article and said it is quite possibly the most rare uh, Greg Capullo cover ever. Oh, well. Hey, hey, hey. I have some of the most rare Adam Hughes covers um, from my spoof comics days. Ooh. Yeah, those things need to come back. I, I'll, I have to message you some art. Um, I'd like to see those. Do you have Do you have scans of them? Uh, y that and more. That oh. and more. Coming soon, brother. Coming soon. Oh, man. Uh, John makes another brilliant suggestion. Let's see. How about a peelable plastic on the front cover with logos? peel it off and you get the virgin cover. That way you don't have to print separate runs. Well, I mean, peelable plastic, that, that wasn't your best idea, John. No, because <laughs> it's not, no I, th I think it's pretty cool. No, no, like if you could do a color form, but what you're saying is, is you print it at the same time and then like it's the same version, but the peelable. Right. Plastic. But, but, or you actually, you could print it on a plastic bag. You can print the logo on a plastic bag and have the comic, you know, printed actually on a comic bag. That gets super involved. But, but but you can do a ne another cover and not that expensively. So when you're a publisher and you're making comics, usually to, to print a second cover is only about another hundred or hundred and fifty dollars. If you're if you're printing um, at least four hundred total copies, so that you could do two hundred of this cover and two hundred of that cover, it's usually an extra hundred or hundred and fifty dollar surcharge. It gets a little bit complicated for the printer. Um, right. Usually they're willing to work with you. And it drives them a little crazy. But I know Mick Sam is willing to work with you a little bit on that usually. Um, Justin McClure, as usual, says, oh, which is always good to see. Um, so to answer your question, definitely a virgin cover. In fact, I would be almost disappointed to get a book like this and not like have the opportunity for a virgin cover. I mean, it's, it's right. Beautiful. So virgin yeah. cover, maybe a black and white version of that. Was that Dylan that came up with that? Thank you so much, man. That was a great idea. That's free cover worthy. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, that's I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that Monday. I don't know if I can get a hold of printers this weekend. If I can, I will. What's your uh, question for the printer? Yeah. And just, just run it by them and see if they can do smaller print runs. They do uh, smaller print runs. We'll do it right now. <laughs> Have it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. I'm on Sam right now. All right. I don't need to log into my account for this. How many pages is this book? It's 54 pages, but I think with a, um, a smaller run, what, what, with, what the credit, run? with the credits and stuff, I think it's 56 pages, 56 pages. Yes. All right. We're making comics right now, right square now. Bound, square bound, deluxe format. Perfect. Bound. Okay. Um, gloss cover. What are you doing? 80 pound text? I think so. I think it is. Yeah. 56 sides. Uh, this is standard comic size. Oh, Four that's how they do sides, right? Yeah. Okay. How many covers are we, uh, we're doing one cover. Perfect. One. Yeah. What did you do for, uh, for, did you do a gloss lamination or a UV? I, I think it, I think it's just gloss lamination. Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't have UV on it. Okay. And how many copies were you thinking of doing? I, I think when you said 400, it, it sounded like there was a price break at 400 as well. And that's the offset. Here's right? what you have to do. Don't dump all this on your wife. Like you, what you do is you screw around with these specifications. All right. It's mixed <laughs> and backslash comic books. Yeah. Don't, don't make your wife do everything. Right? <laughs> because the thing is, she doesn't know, like, if she's, I mean, regardless of her background, like, just to be, 
you guys can discuss it. You can, this is the great thing about what these guys do. This is great for publishers. You can do a hundred copies or $1,224. So there's $6 a unit plus shipping. The shipping is not expensive. That's 200. That's at 200 copies. What I told them is I want to see an average cost per unit because you have to mentally check your un average unit cost and it's annoying. Um, and, and, and that's like very trivial to do for them. It's right. not a lot of programming. It's just division. I add it to a spreadsheet when I do it. So that's a hundred copies is, is that, um, when you get to 350 copies, then they give you this other blue option. What's this option? Well, is this the blue option versus the yellow option? You have two options. When you have two options, it means they're going to either do it on a, a regular printing press and offset press or digital. If you'll notice there's a $400 difference. Why is there a $400 difference? Because it's cheaper to print offset than digital in terms of uh, the setup is cheaper for it's digital. Cheaper to print offset than digital? Yes. Oh, okay. Why is it cheaper to print offset than digital? Because the setup is very cheap on digital, but the average cost per copy is high. Why? Because the setup is so cheap. Okay. It, it's just a gigantic photocopying machine. Right, like, right. I've seen those things, yeah. Yeah. And with a, a big printing press with whatever they're direct to plate, whatever they're doing with the big presses, it's more expensive to set up initially. But once it gets going, it's cheap as a mother. Yeah. So there's 500 copies. Look at the difference at 500 copies, damn it. It's almost less than $2,000 offset, and it's $3,000 digital. Okay. Offset's the way to go. If you're going to do 500 copies. If right. you're going to do 100 copies, it, it, it's not. It would cost like $17 a unit if you're going to do 100. But if you look at what like I'm going to sell, you're going to sell a 1,000 of these virgin covers you know, signed, um, your uh, signature, your your uh, head sketch in there, whatever the heck it's going to be, a thousand of them is two thousand five hundred eighty-eight dollars. That's a thousand. Well, how, how much? You said four hundred was two thousand dollars. Is that what you said? Or is right. it five hundred? Somebody write this down. Four hundred is one thousand one hundred seventy-two dollars. One thousand one hundred seventy-two. Yeah. Okay. That's four hundred. Okay. And then you said 500 was $2,000? 500 is $1,910. Now, okay. what does that mean? What is the marginal cost of the extra 100 copies? Look at the average cost is almost $4 a book. It's a little bit less. What's the marginal cost between 400 and 500? 400 was almost $1,800. Set was 1,772. The co so 17, let's call it $1,800, and I'm off by 28. Was eight almost $1,800. But the cost, and this is already from being offset, the cost to do uh, an extra hundred was only what's the differential? Uh, $150, $140. So your marginal cost is a dollar forty. A dollar forty a unit. Wait, wait. What did you say the five hundred print run was? Look at my screen. Right here. I can't five. see. How you do can't. I see the screen? All right. Sorry if I'm not sharing it. Or right, you can't. Look. <laughs> oh no wonder you can't see. Jesus. Oh, okay. Hello, Christopher John. Hey, Rot Ten. Okay, so. So the nineteen in the green is uh, for five hundred print run. Yeah, this is 500 copies. Okay. And then what's the 3,000? Right. The 3,000, all right. The differential in prices. Why would someone spend $3,000 when they can spend $1,900? Is the girl prettier? No, she's not prettier. One of them is offset. One of them is digital. Oh, I see. I see now. Okay. One of them is photocopy machine, high-end, multi-million dollar photocopy machine. One of them is $500,000 printing press. The one that's a five hundred thousand dollar printing press is a, is cheaper. Why is it cheaper? Because the setup that was more expensive is now a smaller part of what you're doing because you're running more of them. Got it. Now this is why you must look at marginal cost. Four hundred copies. 
costs seventeen hundred seventy dollars. Five hundred copies costs one thousand nine hundred and ten dollars, which means the extra hundred copies costs one hundred thirty dollars approximately. Okay. Which means a dollar thirty per copy. A dollar thirty is your is your marginal cost. Your average cost is still almost four dollars per unit, which is actually much better than six per unit. But your marginal cost, the one extra, that's a you know, big difference from average. When, when you're in digital, the the average cost, the marginal cost is not that much lower than the average. Right. When you're in digital, but when you're in offset, it's much lower usually, much lower at these crucial price points. So when you're at a thousand, the average cost is two dollars and fifty eight cents, and they're not even looking at digital because it would it would you'd go nuts. It'd be like seven thousand dollars, six thousand dollars. Right, right. Even showing it, it's ridiculous. So a thousand copies, average cost is two dollars and fifty eight cents per unit. Well, I'm, gonna look, I'm definitely going to look into this because I, I do like the idea of doing some kind of variation of the cover. So the original print run um, you know, stays intact and then we can do the uh, the new print run as far as, you know, we can do a, uh, a variant as far as like a virgin or augment the cover in some fashion to make it uh, set up yeah. you know from the other version. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, you don't have to really reinvent wheels. Um, you know, you can do. I like five, square wheels. Yeah, square. yeah. Do a variant cover that's um, a virgin cover. We all like virgin covers. Look how nice this is. Your your book will probably be gorgeous as a virgin cover. It's the virgin cover edition, and you're also going to find that people who bought the one with the logo on it are going to want the virgin cover one. Why wouldn't they? This is crazy meta. So this is this is a a variant of a variant cover. No, it isn't. Don't get too into that. This is nuts, man. This is crazy. It's not nuts. It's not <laughs> nuts. It's fine. You're like talking to my dad. Like, no, no, son. Stop. Yeah, Settle stop down. it. Settle stop. down. You're yeah, crazy the thing here. is, when we're, when we're solving what's going to work, we know that like there's demand and there's interest. That right. is crystal clear. You don't want to throw too many givens or extra variables in there unless right. they're crucial to really have to consider. For example... You're going to have to talk, oh, really? talk to the missus because look, 500 copies is 1,900. It's almost two grand, but 500 copies is also $17,000 to you guys in sales, right? So that's 500 copies. So it's $1,900. How much is it for an extra 500? What if we did a thousand instead? It's only $600 more for $35,000 more worth of inventory. So this is when publishers start to go nuts a little bit sometimes. We're like, wait a minute, I can make a million dollars. Hey, Adam, 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 you got my wife curious. She's coming in and she's got that like, you know, that wife look like, what are you guys talking about? Because yeah. he hears you talk about uh, your wife. You got to have the conversation. Okay, Pamela, just to, uh, Adam and his chat are, are brilliant. Uh, so uh, Vilnid in the chat came up with, um, you know how we're almost sold out of the Greg Capullo variants? Uh -huh. I think we only have maybe 20 of them left. Right. And so. And you've been complaining because you don't have any? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any. You guys, she gave me two copies for myself. I only have two copies. So she's being very stingy with me. So uh, what What Adam, he's, he's on the Mixum site right now. And I wrote down the numbers. He's doing a lot of the work for us. So thank you, Adam. Yeah, um, that we can we can re we can go back to print, and we can do a variant of the variant. So um, the reason I brought up Villeneuve is he said we could do a virgin version of the cover, which is without logo. Oh, that sounds good to me. And we yeah. all, I just did four covers like that. Everybody loves them, and it's a beautiful art. If, as long as the image is good. Oh wait, wait, we might have a delivery of a book. Oh, my book. No, so I got a variant. I, it might be my prototype for black and or uh, for. Oh, that's exciting. Adam can sell ice to Eskimos. I can, but I choose not to. I choose to sell spear fishing tools to Eskimos. Things they can actually use. Yeah, things that they can use, man. Yeah. Yeah, ice to have, but yes, I can also sell ice to Eskimos. <laughs> I just, you know, you want to do that. It's not fair. They already got a lot of ice. They don't need it. 
offset's totally the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah, I think offset. I, I, that's, so, so here's I, what we're telling your wife. So we can print a hundred copies of the Virgin cover. Now we already know that you've sold like a thousand of them for thirty five dollars, right? Well, between yeah, the two over time, yeah. over how long? A year? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So over the course of twelve months, you've already generated thirty five thousand dollars in sales out of this. Yes, there was extra some of the fees to Indiegogo. You've you know maybe netted ninety percent of that, but roughly speaking, say thirty thousand dollars you or more you've generated from a thousand copies. So you could reprint a hundred copies with no logo, and you could offer those for uh, you'd pay six hundred six dollars a unit, six dollars and forty cents. You could print five hundred copies for one thousand nine hundred dollars, which is four dollars a unit. Or you could print a thousand copies for two thousand five hundred dollars. Now, um, the reason why the the prices go down uh, per average cost is because you're switching between a digital printing setup and an offset printing setup. Once you get enough copies going, you can save money on the extra copies. But the the, the real consideration is how many copies realistically can you sell if you list it on all of your campaigns in the future as, hey, we have this cool hot item that people want. A thousand copies of a $35 comic book is pretty significant. When you look at how much money you've done on Chrono Mechanics, that's an original book. That's a lot of work to produce a book like that. Right. So the, the market for a variant like this, that's why you're in the publishing business in the first place, is that, all right, I might not make a lot of money on my front list, but I will make money on my back list. You know, And you will make some money on your front list, but we're talking about an extra $35,000, potentially more, um, from this one variant because you're already in this business. It's the it's the do you want fries with that model. Right. You're going ahead and you're offering something because the customer is already there and they're spending money. Oh, by the way, I'm backing this book. And here, Art has this book as an add-on. So that said, um, 500 copies is $1,900. Yeah, I wrote all that down. I got it all here. Right. And yeah. then the 400 print run is uh, 1772. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, it, you it's all good, man. Uh, I, I, I got to run this by you, Adam, because this, this, you, I know you're going to, you, you're going to relate to this is when you get um, X amount of money uh, when you first start your campaign and then you realize that you just paid for your campaign. You know what I mean? And then everything else after that is profit. Yeah, break even is important. So what's your question? Oh, it wasn't a question. It was just like, I, I know that 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 feeling is oh, yeah. universal when you're running these things, when you finally, like like if I, if I went to print on these, right? So let's just say my new overhead is $2,000 just to round it up. And yeah. then if I generated another 2,000 within the next you know week or so, then I'm going, okay, it paid for itself now. You know, yeah, it's sure. a good feeling. Yeah. When we're publishing, okay, and now we can look at College of the Dead, which is a campaign everybody should back. Almost everybody already has. But when you're publishing, it's your front list. Okay. If you don't publish new comics, you know, if you don't have something new, people forget about what you've done in the past. They constantly see, you know, new projects coming at them. So, by publishing College of the Dead Graduation Day, it gives me an opportunity to sell College of the Dead Graduate and College of the Dead, the prequel, the first book. Right. You know, and when we do College of the Dead Spring Break, we'll be able to sell more of College of the Dead book one and this uh, book, Graduation Day. You know, that's, that's what we're doing, publishing. So what we need to be doing is you produce a really great, exciting frontless product, new content, but make the backlist available too, because most of the time people, you know, people do ask. They're like, well, do you also have this available? Do you also have that available? It's our business to have that stuff available. And if we're paying attention when we're doing this, we do a 12 month anticipated sell through of, of inventory. So we look at what can we sell over the next year? I was originally going to print a lot more College of the Dead books when I first printed these. And I was like, well, I'm just kind of starting with the fulfillment. Let me be a little bit careful. But I can see just from the last you know week alone, we've been selling you know hundreds of dollars of extra books, and we'll sell more once the books are getting around. Right. Um, so you know you that 
that is what you want to think about. So you, sh you should be thinking in terms of your front list. Look, Ethan's situation is Ethan's situation. So it's difficult to model based on Ethan's situation. His yeah, he's the exception to the rule. Yeah, he's planning to be um, the next Tom McFarlane, and he's on the right track to get there. In terms of other people doing that, Richard Meyer can't do that. You know, I can't do that. You can't do that. We, you, we can't do Why that. How dare you? No, because your <laughs> model, but the whole thing is, it's not that you can't make more money than Tom McFarlane or Ethan. I can make more money than those guys put together times 10. However, I have to do it my way. You know, it may be the, the licensing on GI Jackrabbits, you know, when we do um, some animated film and toys and crossover with the Ninja Turtles, you know, that we make $300 million on that. Uh, you know, it, it, but you do it all your own way. Everybody finds their own path. But things like understanding, like, all right, well, when you're publishing something new, there's a huge opportunity for people to access your backlist. So you really want to look at at least 12 months of inventory. If you know you're going to publish something new, if you're going to put out one book and then you're not going to publish any books after that for the next two years, then, you know, you don't want to publish. You don't want to have a lot of other stuff on hand. But right. if you know, like, like I know I'm going to do the mermaids this year. I'm very likely to do a spoof comics collection because it's, it's a little past the silver anniversary with the Adam Hughes covers all recolored and they look freaking amazing. They look as good or better than what he's coloring now. And that's saying a lot, but we spent a lot of time over the last few months remastering uh, eight of the pieces that he did for me, uh, which is some of the best work that I've done. And it's, it's excellent work of his, his coloring wasn't as great um, back in the day, but it's better what we have now. You'll see it. Um, so point basically is we have to come up with our own plan. What works for us as we collaborate together, play to our strengths, but make sure, you know, when you're, when you're printing these books and you see, you know, to, to get extra copies of that Greg Capullo cover and, uh, the cost is like a dollar 50 a copy. That's crazy. You know, it's, it's, it's free money only up until the point where it's like, all right, I'll have these for the next year. And then I'm sold out of them. But you, you know, don't print enough that you're going to have them for the next ten years. That's that's not the that's We've not the idea. That. There'll be other new things that you're doing and other cool stuff you're doing. Oh, oh, I have. I, I'm working on. Uh, I, I was looking at the drawing tier. I got a drawing tier on the uh, the black and white site. Can you uh, full screen? Whether you like it or not, here it comes. Whether I like it or not, yeah. So I I did this during the pontificator show. I was just kind of doing. So this is kind of going to be the this is the rough groin, and so I started tightening it up a little bit. So this is this is the Whitney song, aka White Groin, right here. Mm, cool. Yeah. So this is the one that's going to be available uh, in the um, oh, what is the tier? Uh, I think it's just a drawing, the drawing tier, and it comes with a book. So it comes with the book, and uh, we are going to once I get the artwork done. We're going to uh, put it in as an add-on. So when you're checking out, you can add the drawing onto your order. Um, but the reason we didn't do it up front is because uh, once you set up the tier, you can't do, uh, you can't put artwork in. And the artwork was very important. So yeah, this yeah. is going to be the drawing here. That's beautiful. Oh, thanks. All right, you can't be the next Tom McFarlane then. <laughs> well, the thing is, there's always one guy who's leading the army kind of thing. And um, it was either going to be Rob Lightfield or Tom McFarlane and Tom McFarlane is just too good to not be the guy. Um, you like the line art variants. You got all three from EVS. You don't know what the percent of the audience is. Yeah. The line art variants are cool. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it too for future things. Good night, Tungsten. Good to see you. Tittles. There you go. Um, all right. I feel like I got to show off some more stuff. Yeah. Show off some more stuff. That is a great looking book. Everybody black, yeah. back black and white. Yeah, that would look great without the, I mean, it looks good with the logo, but it'll look great without as well. Yeah, I think it, it won't look weird. Like there's there's enough stuff going on. Wait, here it is right here. Up here with the hell, well, over here, over here with the helicopter. Like that. Yeah, I think it'll work out perfect without the logo. Yeah, people will love it. Yeah, that's cool. People will love it. All right. I am active, Agent Yokai Zero. Good to see you. And thank you for being pleased with it. I am happy about that. And Smirking Phoenix is saying that um, it's viable 
and we should be thinking about the IPs. Uh, yeah, the IPs have landed home. It's completely reasonable to start thinking this way. Like we, it's time for us to start building up what we can do using our strengths. And I think it's great to have for us to have unique channels too. The interview channels that people are doing, yeah, definitely flash stuff. Are, have you put on your um, Batman cowl on screen yet? No, it is so brittle. It's kind of cracking. It, it's it's as oh. old as the movie is. Yeah, so I got it like a couple years after the movie. I had a full rubber suit. I got that for Halloween. It's like four hundred dollars. Ridiculous. Oh, do you really? That's yeah, I don't still have it, but I used to. Um, yeah, it was fun. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, so this is this is the card. There's also uh, every one of the tiers for the new campaign will come with a uh, trading card as well. So, um, and that's gonna the card's gonna have the new artwork that uh, Kyle and I did for this campaign. Yeah, it's fantastic. I really did. Kyle sign that piece. I didn't see a signature on it. Yeah, yeah, it's right under mine. It's a little. It's weird because it's a little transparent. I don't know why he did it that way. Okay. Well, you can. Uh... Maybe I should hold it. Yeah, ask him about that. If you want him to change it, I don't know. Let's look at it. Oh, I can, I can do it myself. I'll just solidify the the um the name. Yeah, I think it's you can kind of see through it a little bit. RT Bear can do just about anything, huh? Oh yeah, hell yeah. I've been doing this. Yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah, you can't really see. It's a little. It's a little transparent. I think that's why it doesn't stand out. Okay. It's in that gold color, like uh, like that '94. And if you guys are paying attention, the '94 on the robot is the first year black and white came out through Image Comics. Oh my so, God! Yeah, I threw '94. Yeah, so this is a summer anniversary. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's there's uh, there's a little celebration going on here. So it's 25 years. Uh, so we're bringing it back, and uh, also like the uh, Vampirilla cover, black and white. That's celebrating Vampirilla's 50th anniversary and Black and White's 25th. So that's that's kind of some weird kind of symmetry with the numbers, you know, with the 25 and the 50. It's uh, time. It's I have a 25th anniversary that I missed for Spoof Comics. That that was it was a parody. Um, we did parodies. We did female versions of all the male superheroes. Oh, you told me about this. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and it's like that's kind of come into the. It doesn't belong in like. It, it was supposed to be a joke, um, but they've they've done it now. Yeah, now it's yeah it's now it's big business. It's not big yeah, business. It People. feels it feels more like it's um I feel like it's like the Planet of the Apes type of deal where it's like, what the hell have you done with these comic books? You weren't supposed to do this. They bury the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, fighting robots takes you back to the days where I read Magnus the Robot Fighter. Absolutely, I always loved that idea. So this is this is Magnus this robot fighter uh, with better with better suits, <laughs> cool outfits, and cooler robots. I think I, I love designing robots. I want to just I don't want to keep drawing the same robot uh, because uh, some of the manufacturers in the story, um, you know, are responsible for these robots. So I, but I don't want them all to look the same. So one of the things I'm doing to unite all the robots is with the silver and red. So uh, all the robots that come from the villain will be in that silver and red color, but they're going to be different. Each one of them will be slightly different. And this is all, this is an all new graphic novel. I really should know this already. I don't know why I don't know that. What's the matter? Uh, it's it's based. It, it was originally started off as a remastering, so I was gonna um, digitally kind of clean up the the ink line from the original book. Sure. But ambition being what it was, uh, I started drawing new panels and started clarifying story, and then I started rewriting story, and then one thing left to an, uh, led to the next, um, and it's pretty much a, a brand new storyline. It's a brand new storyline with just. I would say 80%, uh, maybe more, maybe 90% of the work is all brand new. So it's loosely based on the 1994 um, version, but it's completely different. Uh, it's, it's, it's beyond remastering. It's pretty much just redone. And then the volume two that I'm working on right now is a complete departure from the issue three of the original run. So it's going to kind of loosely follow um, the plot, but it's it's going to go way beyond that. And there's going to be some really killer reveals 
uh, that are new and unique to this storyline that weren't in the original. You're going to love Chang. All, all I can say is you're going to love the villain. You're going to love the reveal. Um, and it, it's going to be badass. And then we're, we're going to tip the hat to the original ending in the 94 version, but it's going to have a killer twist to it. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Are you yeah. thinking about a follow-up book? This is the follow-up. Yeah, volume two will be um, the end, the conclusion to uh, the black and white story. So the original the original storyline was three issues that I put out in '94 through Image. So one of the, the the main idea was that I was going to mirror that. So I was going to take that and re well not mirror but remaster that that series. But then I was going to do it issue one, two, and three just like the original. But then my wife, she, she's really smart, man. She's like she's like you need more content. You need more content. Um, you can't just do it as a 22 page story. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was going, yeah, but then I can put out the next book quicker and then so on and so forth. And I said, it'll take me twice the amount of time to do it as a 48 page. And she said, no, you got to do it as a 48 page. So mm -hmm. that's what we did. And so pretty much the first issue is the first two issues of the original series, as far as pagination and plot, you know, the way it kind of breaks down. Um, like I said, there's all kinds of deviations uh, along the way. And so the last issue, um, which was issue three, um, volume two is going to be loosely based on that. But it's going to be instead of 22 pages worth of content, it's going to be 48 pages. And hopefully we can we can build that into a 56 page like we did with uh, the first campaign. So that's that's the plan right now is just to have a killer ending um, for, you know, all right. for but if for people want more, will you make more? Oh, you mean more like new stories after this? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Um, okay. The thing is, you guys blew me away. Thanks to each and every one that has backed this book. Thanks to everybody that supports my channel. You guys, you don't know how much this means to me and, and people like Adam and, and everybody comics gate because we're working blind. I mean, it's like, we're investing time and energy, and we don't know if the stuff's going to pay off. We have no idea. You know, we just throw it out there. And when I think it was two days ago now um, that we launched Black and White, and in a 24 hour, actually in an eight hour period, we had, I think it was like $12,000 worth of business. Yeah, and huge. you don't know what that does. I mean, that just warmed your heart you're like yeah there is a god you know you like you yeah. just, like believing in everything you like think everything and he comics. likes comics yeah there's a god yeah. and he likes comics but you know you keep doing the show you interact with the audience the audience is interested in supporting you they're interested in what you're doing and what you're talking about they're listening to it so yeah, yeah that's why like for me i'm gonna do my i'm gonna but let me my, back oh i just yeah, want to enthusiastically answer your question hell yeah there's going to be more black and white okay. good so we're going to be looking for it so get on black and white back black and white the link is in the description uh and you will be part of something that's ongoing and it looks like we just created a variant uh, a virgin variant yeah uh, and keep an eye out for that as well uh that's going to be a book that you want uh for sure obviously people want it yeah. very 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 exciting um and we created that live on adam post show so adam post yeah. adam post comic book company show i'm working on a name for uh for the show but yeah i'm gonna do it if we do stuff adam we have to call it the art adam the art adam show well then you, you're gonna have to be on it all the time you have time for that we'll make time well we can do it back and forth so we can we can do them on your channel okay on my channel. do it on the art channel i'm yeah. game it's the art adam show it's all about branding okay i'm with you <laughs> we gotta f figure frega in there someplace too yeah frega's uh frega's well, just frega we love oh, frega cool. It'll be like Art Adams plus Boom. Plus Boom. Yeah. We can kind of like, Great we can street. evolve it. I think the comic book company stuff is interesting though. Like, and next time I'm on the show, I, uh, you know, I'd be like, I'd like to be talking about or doing the show. I'd like to be talking about doing, um, you doing the variant. And be like, all right. So we were talking about that the last show. We got the variant going. We talked to Mixim about this. Here's what's going on. I know I brought up the issue with damages and here's how they're taking care of me. And here's how, if it comes up, you guys should talk to them. Um, yeah. I mean, it, there's, I like the idea of continuity like that. And look, it's going to be as entertaining as it is. People are going to want to watch it. They watch it. If they don't want to watch it, they don't have to watch. We all have to kind of be who we are and have fun with it and keep it keep it interesting. 
Right. I, um, I have to say something, though. I have to publicly apologize to Philip Diaz, uh, Lost Pages. He was We were supposed to do a live stream uh, today, and I got a little inebriated last night. Yeah, just because we're old doesn't mean we're responsible. So I woke up a little late. So I woke up late for Adam, so I apologize for that and uh, for not being able to live stream with Philip on my channel today. But we're going to do it probably tomorrow. And this is this is how I'm going to try to make it up to Philip. Go back the lost pages. Yeah. It looks great, man. It's a great idea. It's so funny because the reason I love Philip is, is and his brother Brandon is they're like old souls. Like I can talk to them like I'm talking to Adam. You know what I mean? Like like um, because they appreciate like old like um, mythology, comic book mythology, um, pulp stuff. Like if you if you look at the the um, the basic DNA of the Lost Pages. Man, it is a nod and a tribute to just about everything, even like old radio shows, like the pulp magazine stuff, you know, uh, like the shadow, you know, um, just all kinds of great stuff. Right. So um, doing I good. love talking to those guys. Yeah. And the book's doing really well. And they somehow they scored a Simon Bisley cover. So I don't know how much they had to. Uh, you just send that guy money and he draws. He's like a, like he's normal like that. I think they had dirt on him, though. I think it was more than money. I think they had photos, some 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 dirty photos or something. Yep, probably with them in it. I mean, you know, this is April that we're talking about. This is the Magic Cop guys. Anything's possible. Yeah, this is a successful. Uh, this is a successful, successful campaign. You know Thank you for mentioning him. I want to do a show with Phil too. I got to reach out. Those guys are. Great. I haven't been doing much, but you know what? I'm going to do it in the framework of the comic book company, and I think that's going to be my show's name, like the comic book company. I think really simple, but. Comic book company, something I have to play with it a little bit more, but yeah, you know, there's a, there are a lot of interesting stories to tell. There's stuff from the past, stuff of the present, but also like interacting with you guys and have, and you know, fun with the the comic skate guys. We can kind of talk about things we're planning and things we're doing. And Ethan talks about his publishing plans. He's already described his plans for the next right. year. We should all be doing that too and letting people know what's coming. It's a lot. Yeah. I'm not sure about what I want to commit to doing with respect to. Um, a couple of things that I'm doing because I like to have this stuff like done in advance and it depends on other people. So, right. You know, I have to make sure I have it in hand, but I could definitely talk about stuff I'm working on. I just can't show everything I'm working on. I sent you something that I'm working on. It's a recolored version of one of my Adam Hughes covers. Look in your Twitter and let's see your live response to it. Okay. Uh, art is, Oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Pretty good. No. Man, you know what? Like when you talk spoof, it, God, look at this thing. It's 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 beautifully executed, but it's at the same time it's absolutely hilarious. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like I, I this is one of my things, Adam. I, I always say this. I I I get a kick out of people spending a lot of time and energy on things that don't uh, that are just for laughs. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that are just to, to get a, a rise out of people. Mm -hmm. um, and this is definitely uh, one of the most beautiful executed uh, laughs I've had in a long time. God, yeah. I wish we could show. I wish we could show people. We're gonna show soon. We're gonna show soon. I have to make a couple decisions, but. I it, God, I want to describe. I want to describe what I'm looking. <laughs> at. Oh my you're, God! You're the looking one, at. Yeah. Think, okay, the one that's off. Okay, there's the center character, and then there's the one off to the left. I don't want to describe this person, but that is absolutely beautifully done and hilarious at the same time. We'll start. To, I want to show the stuff that I'm working on as well. This is just all very new stuff, guys. So. When we are thinking about like, well, you'll show this or not that, you want to be able to get generate momentum from from um, what you're showing, but also kind of like not burn it out a little bit, keep it really exciting when it first comes out. So, right. so that's why I just showed it to Art. But as you can see, Art thinks it's pretty cool. It's Adam Hughes's recoloring of it's. Uh, Adam Hughes did the pencils for that. The one that we published, he did the pencils the inks and the colors. Kirk Lindo, who was my studio manager, inked some of Adam's work when we were doing spoof because Adam couldn't complete all of it. So, but Kirk went back, had the pencils and recently re-inked it. And then um, Kirk uh, uh, managed the process of with the colorist who executed on the, on the coloring. And it looks much better 
than um, the original. That was it originally the contemporary. It looks very contemporary. We went contemporary with the stylistic choices on the yeah. um, coloring. The coloring is ten times better than it was. That was uh, Spoof Comics number seven, the Justice Broads. Um, well, now they're going to be able to look it up, man. Yeah, you can look up the Justice Broads, but you, you can't see this remastering of it. Yeah. Um, and well, yeah, maybe I'll. All right, so let me find the original Justice Broads. The Justice Broads. I came up with all those wacky titles. Uh, you know what? Whenever yeah. I get humor from you, Adam, I don't expect it, and it always cracks me up. Who who do you go? You go on Winger Show, right? And oh, Winger Show, yeah. The shit that comes out of your is absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it gets a little wild. Uh, yeah, they are. I love those guys. They're they kind of get you riled up. Like at the beginning of the show, you're kind of like you're like the Adam Post, right? But then right. about like midway, you're like just zapping right back, man. It's hilarious. yeah. Well, you know, it also is like, you know, there, this is the great thing about these shows is like you're you're hanging out with um, friends after a while. You know, these are your, they know you and you know them. This was the original uh, of the cover. Oh, this is going to be cool. Yeah, it'll be extra cool. Sharing. I just saw the the brand new version. Yeah, everyone's. Oh, I didn't even show it. Okay, I'm not sharing the screen. Um, boom. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is what Adam did for us. It's also um, really. Oh, I was gonna say it was cropped, but yeah, there's the whole thing. Yeah, it was a little cropped though. It was a little cropped. Yeah, you but know, the, this, this is actually pretty pretty well executed for the time as, as well. That coloring is pretty good. It's okay. It's not as good as the new stuff, but it's not bad. Fuck's the new stuff. All right, can I get this? Uh, this is. If the you new send stuff. Adam a hundred dollars super. Oh, you're gonna show it. I was just gonna say if you. Send I wasn't it, going to. Yeah, this is that's that's the new. Um, oh my gosh! Color. Look at that! Holy crap! That'll okay. Be okay. Now I can say I can say it. Okay, yeah. the Martian Manhunter chick. Like, it's beautifully done, but it cracks me up at the same time. It's it's a weird combination of. Just brilliantly executed, sexy, and hilarious all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With just yeah. the things just across her bosoms, like that's pretty cool. That will most likely be a variant virgin cover. That's that's okay. one of uh, eight covers that he did. Um, or is it yeah, seven? I, I have to miscount a little bit. But anyway, yeah, those are the books that that should be back in print. You know, that's not in print. So we've been yeah. working for like the last few months along with other material, but I've been working on that because um, I loved that work. It was so exciting and it, it proved a lot of points for me too. Like really the only mistake I ever made in publishing was never uh, not taking full advantage of the opportunities to have more of the guys like Adam Hughes um, and Brian Steelfreeze did a little bit for me and uh, Cully Hamner and other guys in Gaijin, um, not Kelsey. It was like, I don't think Kelsey was with them at the time. And um, well, now you can Atlanta. get Kelsey. Well, I, he's always very busy. I'd love to do something with him. He's an amazing yeah. guy. But yeah, look, that's that's going to be spoof comics when it comes back. It's going to be the highest of high end. And uh, I'm thinking of a collector's box. I'm thinking of really just putting it all out on the line and going for it. But um, I have to ask you though, what are these characters' names? Because I know you're going to crack me up with uh, all these characters' names. Um, is it I just a bad broad? I can't, no, I can't think of the the Martian Stupid Manhunter broad, girl. I can't broad. think of I can't think of the Martian Hunter one. Uh, but the Flash. All right, so the one on the front is Super Babe. The one on the back is just Bat Babe, and the Flash is um, Flasher. <laughs> look at her look at her top look yeah, at her top yeah. oh. i have to ask you as well is this like one of this has got to be one of the first times adam did that zipper gag because he's probably done it a million times since it, it was 92 uh so it may very well have been he was good with zippers he definitely was good with zippers we have another character he did that um has an amazing um zipper top as part of our costume but the thing is they're all original character designs and we were involved with him in designing them it was all work for hire so it's kind of been some consideration of bringing back some of the characters as something else more than just spoof right. um, because they're that like the visual the visuals are really strong uh, so yeah um, it's something that I I'm really excited about it's something that I'm going to do more with 
Um, and I've been working. One of the things I knew for sure was investing and having the coloring done and the remastering done uh, was, would not be a mistake. <laughs> worth it. Yeah, I mean, you plus the original drawing, which was already amazing, um, and just brought it up. You know, you cranked it to eleven, my friend. Look at everything's this. at eleven, all yeah. eleven, on stop. It's sexy and hilarious. I can't even describe how entertaining this image is. And anyone who's an Adam Hughes collector or an Adam Hughes fan, like you, kind of need the book. Oh yeah, you kind of need all of those covers. But the thing is, is I kind of want to do all the covers as variants on a 48 page common body. Oh, very cool. Well, you will have it very soon, Eric McIntyre. Yeah, pleasure. Dax Martin, thank <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, thanks for the support, uh, Dax. Thanks for that comment. Like, I'm kind of, but I'm, I'm really looking at like, I maybe I just need to do like, it's really the, the interiors are fine, you know, and I will do, I probably have to do a digital collection of the interiors because there's like, 40 spoof comics. I'm not going to be reprinting a thousand pages of spoof comics. Um, it's too much, but, uh, but selecting like a 48 pages of like two of my favorite issues, coloring them, lettering them, relettering them and offering them with like eight Adam Hughes variant covers is probably where I'm headed. And then you kind of just buy whichever ones you want or buy the whole set if you want it. But uh, what I'd love to do art is uh, like what Ethan's doing with the honeycomb box set do an executive oh, box that. set yeah. of all eight with Adam's art all over it. It would be like, that is, would be the ultimate, like, all right, it's 25th anniversary. You could put, this is the best of spoof comics. You could put it on a shelf. There it is. It's in a gorgeous box, limited number of them made. Hey, thanks Robert. Um, and, uh, Oh, you're talking about the art. Yeah. The art's pretty good too, but, uh, looking hot. I thought you were talking about my haircut. Um, <laughs> Very possible, but uh, that's the Adam Post humor, right? There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's really is it. It really is who I am, you know. It's, you a, say, brand, it's a brand of humor that only Adam Post can. There, deliver. There's a governor back there that's like, "Don't say this and don't say that," but you get it loose a little bit. It's like, "All right, let's just have some fucking fun." Here. Yeah. All right, brother. Yeah, I, I, there's one. Eric McIntyre would buy one. All right, we're okay, gonna. I, all right, we're gonna do it. I gotta. Take Art's off. gonna take off. Everybody, back. Um, black and white. That's what we're talking about here. Boom, boom. Hell's yeah. Lost pages. Back and white. Spoof will be coming. Oh, I'll work on it. Up. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for backing it. 13 Money now. well spent. Money well spent. Uh, Art, I'm going to let you go. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for being patient. Art was just a little bit late, but um, he's fine now, and we did great. Thank you for the support, guys, and thank you, Art. We'll see yeah, you again no soon with, with another video. If I don't see you, I will miss you. Yes, and let's do some Art Adams uh, streams. Yeah, we're going to do at least one Art Adams stream, see how offended everybody is.